All righty then. It's funny, when I do the recordings, it's like immediate intro. When it's like a stream as well, it's like, oh, well, I guess I have to wait a little bit. But also say hello for the re-upload. It, it's, it's all very complicated. Oh, I, should we, I we should say hello there. to all the live, the, the people in the comments of the re-upload, or do we say we say hello to the live Maybe viewers both too? both of them, I guess. Like, yeah, hello so to hello those to watching the re-upload, but also hello to the ones that are about to pop in. Say hi. Yeah, just uh, whoever you are, whenever you listen to this, hi. Hope you're having all a good day. For all y'all passing through, all you weary travelers, Ready um, to listen to us answer super chats. I saw so many. Uh, this is coming out just after the premiere of uh, episode five. Our uh, coverage of episode five. That that all. The fifth episode of the of the of the coverage of the fifth episode of the show. Oh, um, what a good episode! That yeah. was such a great episode, <laughs> man. So much great stuff in that show. I've been so pleasantly surprised with how good it's been. Consistently, how good it's been. Oh. So on that note, right? <laughs> uh, when I make those uh, edits, they take a while. That I'm like, I'll hang out and watch, see what people think and stuff. And oh boy, what 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 controversy? Chat chat were like the the rebels and the zombies in the show. You know, it was just war. It was just everyone going blah 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 blah, blah and eating each other and oh. shooting each other and stuff. Craziness. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because if you look at chat and you look at like our coverage, our our energy is so much more chill. You know, like. Oh, this, 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 this. like rah, rah, rah. <laughs> caps lock everywhere and stuff. Um, so uh, yeah, yeah, we we've got um, so to give an update, we've managed to catch up with everything except She Hulk. They're the things we've got left. Um, been looking for a slot to get that in. Uh, they will all come out eventually. A lot of them have, have been uh, sorted, but they're not out yet. Um, so I thought we could combine. Um, a little little chat about the Flash trailer that came out. Maybe some comments if people wanted clarifications about uh, The Last of Us. And then, of course, do some Tuba Chats. Why not? You know? like a... Well, I have not seen the Flash trailer, so... That's uh... actually fine, because I was mostly going to talk I? about the I idea. I did! I did! But I watched it during the Super Bowl. Oh, so, oh. Sorry, the big game. Ooh, the big Yeah, game. I saw it. I saw it when I was watching the big game. Well, uh, what did you think of the trailer? Um, I don't. I don't think anything of it really. <laughs> I have no strong thoughts on yeah, it. Yeah, we're whatsoever. pretty much at that point. Like I the think. Only thing that there is to think about is the meta of like, man, we we are at like the point of hype and nostalgia, like like just grabbing anything that we can and throwing it in to like get people to watch. And this is like, why is it even called the Flash? Everybody's excited about Batman. That's like the main draw yeah, of that film. Ever, clearly. That's what everybody's talking about. That's what all of the hype is for. It's not even about the Flash. <laughs> like, <laughs> someone had posted a tweet. I don't know if I sent it to y'all or not, but this is like this is the fourth time in seven years that the like that that Warner Brothers got pitched the idea of an older Batman, but this time to swap things up, he actually kills people. Got approved. Does he kill people? Wait, sorry. I I, I think I've absorbed half of what you just said. Um, um like an <laughs> Batman, but he's older right. and he kills people. And that's been done like four times in the last seven years. You've got uh of course the um the Batwoman uh Conroy, Pat or not, I, I keep saying Pat Conroy. Um oh, like Kevin the author of Pat Con Yeah, I know. For whatever reason, I just keep I keep wanting to say, ah, oh, Pat Count uh, Pat Conroy. For whatever reason. I don't know. Waters Wide, the Great Santini, Lords of Discipline. Great book, by the way. Read the Lords of Discipline. Mm. But um uh but we have uh we have Pat Conroy. We have uh, I guess this one is I guess he's gonna probably kill people in this one, I guess, whatever. I don't know. Um you have Well, funnily enough, he is the Batman from eighty nine and returns and that Batman did kill. And he yeah. did kill people, yeah. So we have, of course, our, our DC Batman, uh, Ben Affleck, who was also... No. What? Well, it's not for much longer. This will be it. Well, well, I, well, he was one of those that got approved, you know, an older Batman. Oh, yeah. Well, well yeah. I mean, he, uh, remember when he shot that grappling hook into the car and dragged it around with the guys inside? <laughs> yeah, yeah, like I, a wrecking yeah, ball. He, he, yeah. yeah it, um, oddly enough, I also... 
uh, also saw Ben Affleck. He was in a Super Bowl commercial. He was doing the drive through at like a fast food thing. and It was amazing. Um, and then there was another. I forget which one it was, but I, I, I wish I saved the tweet. I don't know. Maybe someone could ping it on Discord for me, but um, I, I should have sent it to you all. But I was thinking, well, yeah, that's kind of so weird. Like we're, we're in the age well, where I mean, Batman killing people isn't edgy anymore. That's just par for the course. Well, except for the Batman, the Batman except film. The, the, yeah, I guess out, the yeah. Batman. Yeah, that one seems so weird because it's just like off the off on its own. Doing well, its own I thing mean, away. that's that's where it's probably there is that like, are they actually going to be moving forward with uh with like concurrent Batmans? Did he not I kill wonder. anybody in that? I forget. Uh, I'm pretty sure other guys shot each other. Like there were people who got shot, but I don't think he like killed anyone. I'd have to think, think so. about that again. Yeah, it, 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 people... it would all be it would be hyper indirect, right? Like okay. that's the closest it got to, I think, and what people talked about was he a shot is about to be taken on him. I think does he dodge it and it goes into someone he dodges else? And it shoots, and it, yeah, but I mean, what's he meant to do? <laughs> no, <laughs> like, it, 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 it. <laughs> there was a discussion about it, but like I, I don't, ah, right, I don't okay. think that's a line cross compared to the other Batman's doing stuff. Well, compared yeah, he's to the actively... Well, Batman here's a question. Or, yeah, um, I'm not sure where you guys fall on this, but I can just uh, both of you seen Batman Forever? Yeah, <sighs> but not for a I... long time. I, I think I'm in the same boat. I remember virtually nothing about it. Because this gets discussed a lot. I actually threw this at Az and Gary because I wanted to know what they think too, right? Because it's kind of um, arguably a conundrum. Arguably. I'm curious what you guys will say. So, scenario. Two-Face has got his gun on Batman and Robin, I think. And he's like, aha, I'm going to kill you now. Gotcha. I'm going to fire this gun real soon. But I'm going to flip my coin first. Uh, Batman even says, like, remember, Harvey, you got to flip your coin before you can... You know, kill anyone. He has to he has to land on the scratchy side for him to decide he's gonna do it. But the, you know, he just keeps flipping until it does anyway. Point being, I'm gonna kill you, but I gotta flip my coin first. And then Batman uh, has on him a bag of coins, and so when Harvey flicks his, he throws all of those bag of coins up at him, and it makes uh, Harvey stumble, and he falls off the very narrow path that path that he's on, and he lands in a pile of acid. Uh, dies. Now, what do you think that is? If he throws all the coins to distract him so that he falls? That. Well. <laughs> I mean, if his goal was to make him fall. Yeah, that's like, what I'm thinking. Yeah. If that's his goal was to get him to fall, then you're, you're well, killing him. Um, so the, the argument a, a lot of people make is that really it's Two-Face that kills himself because Batman throwing those coins, he doesn't have, like what happens is Harvey's like, whoa, whoa, trying to grab at them. And then he falls and, and, and the, the argument is like, well, had he not been so fucking obsessed with that coin, he'd be fine because it's just coins going up in the air. If you knew mm. that is what his like reaction would be, it's like if you had someone who was like super addicted to drugs and you oh, and use drugs can, to lure them into a trap that would kill them if i can clarify for are, chat, a lot of people are saying uh manslaughter not murder remember killing that's all i'm looking for did he kill him and manslaughter is killing oh yeah manslaughter is killing absolutely so we just um, I, I just want to know does it cross the line into did he kill and the, the umbrella of kill includes manslaughter yeah i think so I'm pretty sure that's just a fact. Uh, but like the, the what I'm trying to get at is a lot of people say it doesn't count as manslaughter either. It's 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 Two Face's fault. He's the one that was like, "Rah, I want that coin." But I think the counter to that would be that that's what Batman's relying on, right? Batman's intention is to use his interest in the coin to get him to kill himself, quote unquote. But that would still be killing him, I guess. It's uh. So yeah, I don't know. What do you think, Fringy? Yeah, I mean, if he knows that he was so upset. If that was his goal, was to essentially get him to that place, then regardless of whether, like, Two-Face was, in some sense, you know, complicit in his own death, it's like, well, yeah, but you still knew what was going to happen, and you did it anyway. Um, in oh, fact, a... you wanted it to happen, right? Like, that was your goal. An interesting point was just raised as well. Two people were falling down that same pit, and Batman jumps down and saves them. He does not do that for Two-Face. Ah, well... Which, oh, hmm. fuck, I never <laughs> even thought about that, damn, because he could have... <laughs> He, yeah, could, he was. Up. I'm pretty sure he dropped the gun at that point as well, so he could save him. Oof. Nah, he 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 was doing a <laughs> Batman Returns there. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have to save you. <laughs> I don't have to save you. That would be kids, yeah. right? That's what he says. 
What did I say? Did I say Batman Returns? Yeah. <laughs> Batman Begins, yeah. Yeah, I like how we talk about Batman because of that Flash trailer, because it's all about him. Like, he's <laughs> the important part. That's all everybody cares about. But hey, Zod's back. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> he might not be cringe, though. Who knows? But then he won't be funny. <laughs> um, really hope I haven't missed the discussion about the Flash trailer. Maybe we should uh, do it at the beginning of the Ant-Man coverage. Look at the trailer for, Ant uh, for the Flash or something. Oh, uh, well, I've seen Ant-Man, guys. <laughs> but yeah, you have. I have not yet. Uh, uh, I have seen it. <clears throat> you thought it was brilliant, right? No. Oh, you didn't think? Oh. No. I, I didn't, no. Damn oh, it. okay. But we'll, we'll talk about that. We'll talk about that another day. Another so I don't day. have to sort of tread back through that film out. unnecessarily ahead of time. <laughs> um, well, yeah, so, I mean, anyway, I'll, I'll, I'll try and keep us up to date with the newer Super Chats. Um, it says, start with basic lines and see other players' interpretations. I'm not sure what that's referencing. Is it a quote? In any case. I don't either. Uh... Long live the long man and his length, also high ranks. Hello there. Hi. Thank you. How dare you like The Last of Us show? Anyway, the show is great so far. Yeah, I mean, it's, I think it's really, really solid. I've not been very compelled by the arguments, but I know it's a very charged subject. And uh, I guess at this point, all I'm hoping is people get less angry about all of it. It is a TV show, after all. I'm pretty chill with the idea that people hate it. It's whatever. Um, I think it deserves praise, but I mean, you know. Uh, That's pretty snoy of you. It's it's we've been in this position before. We either praise or shit on something, and everyone else is like, seriously, what the fuck? Um, I remember we I, I got some flack for saying tomorrow war was shit. <laughs> yeah, I remember yeah, that. Yeah, but that movie, People guys, 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 listen. I've ever seen in my life. I I appreciate all of you for being here, but guys, the tomorrow we tomorrow war was fucking trash. All right, it's it's probably one of the worst movies ever made. I got to be frank with you. If you think that movie is anything other than total garbage, we might have to have a discussion. <laughs> That's true. It wasn't woke though, so I suppose yeah. I put the air date for this episode is February fifteen, Eddie. Fifteen. Fifteen. Yeah. I'm gonna keep the it. 15, <laughs> the fifteen. The fifteen. I like it too much. Speaking uh, of extra ends being added to things, when did snoy become a word that we use? I don't know. Since I'm the Ragnarok sure. coverage, That's I think, the... is what made that happen. That's what we started using it, but I think Rags is asking. The... Oh, I don't like know what it's Because, yeah. like, do they still call them the Sony, Sony ponies? Is that like a yeah, thing? Yeah, I was thinking. This is some old school terminology. Sony ponies, right I don't here, think Colin. so. Xbox, Xbox, I don't really hear those anymore. Then again, uh, I'm not in those like spaces snoy. anymore. It's, but... It seems like snoy is the, uh, is the common one now. One of the worst um, drags. That's kind of a low bar considering. Been for years. <sighs> multiverse. Yeah, Tomorrow Wars. It's actually down Tomorrow there with Wars Multiverse is, Madness. Is down, I think. Yeah, like I think it's worth. It actually again, is. Usually, usually the general standard we apply is if the film is breaking time and space. Like, there is like, um, nothing. That, that the movie's total. Really... There is a Tomorrow oh, War EFAT movies that could come out someday, yeah. or it might be lost time. But we did coverage. Sure. Yes. Rags yeah, and I had yeah. to watch it twice because I think yeah, Mom was busy, did. so we did the notes for that one. What a wonderful time <laughs> in the world. Um, today is Wednesday, February 15th, 2022. True. I don't know. I think episode 5 was a bit bloated, Kappa. Oh, <laughs> bloated? Oh. I... You're talking oh, about I the see. bloater oh, rags. I yeah, I, I see. Oh, I haven't played the game, yeah. so I don't know as well, much. Ooh. Some people say these things unironically about the show, so I have to be like... I said well, Kappa, why? didn't I? Cap Kappa. That's right. You said at the beginning or the end, or mischievous. You said at yeah. the end. I did say. Well, I didn't know. Well, still, still, it might be one of those like I still think it, but I might veil it in sarcasm so that I'm safe and I've got my 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 cozy little back door to squeeze out of. I do like them back doors, just as a safety precaution sort of thing. That's true. Like, you want a front door and a back door. Your front door is. Very important. You use it all the time. Mm -hmm. Your backdoor, you've always got to have that backdoor ready to go. Yep. Uh, do you think decades from now, Nintendo will start releasing things on Steam? I don't know if Nintendo... Oh. I don't know. They seem to, they seem to be uh, really uh, 
against doing that. I, I get the impression that one of the things that would make them avoid doing it is because they often do sort of interesting things with their hardware that kind of makes yeah. it a bit harder to translate those games over to PC as easily as you can with like Xbox and PlayStation games. Yeah, I mean, you could, I mean, there's no reason you couldn't do it. Um, I mean, you can have, I mean, there are emulators for like yeah, DS games and stuff. Yeah, you can figure it um, out, but whether or not they want to. Whether they want to. Nintendo's big thing is that they sell their hardware for their games, like more so than anybody else. Their games, I mean. Yeah, like they're sort of their rate, own. Uh, well, I mean, think about it this way. The attach rate for Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is like one out of two Switch owners own it. There's no game on PlayStation or Xbox. Not even Grand Theft Auto has that kind of attach rate. Um, no, not even Grand Theft Auto has that kind of attach rate. Um, like that's the big selling point for them. If they start putting their games on, like, PC, I feel like that really cuts into, like, the main thing that that helps them make a bunch of money. Um, especially since they don't seem to have any difficulty selling their games to millions of people anyway. Yeah, Nintendo's are, they're kind of like Apple games, in a way. Um, and their games are of... to make, too. There's that that's worth keeping in mind. Like, Breath of the Wild, like... The, you know, Tears of the Kingdom that, that's coming out is probably, even though that's like one of their big games, it's probably not as expensive as like the average AAA game, I would I would guess. Um, I would imagine that a Naughty Dog game has a higher budget than that. Almost certainly. Even though, again, uh, like, you know, like that, I'm pretty sure that uh, Breath of the Wild sold like 30 million copies. Like, that's the thing, goddamn. Like, that's a lot of money to make. And it's like, well, I mean, why would you put your games on PC if that cuts into you being able to sell them uh, and create an ecosystem where you make a lot more money than you would on I, Steam? I guess you'd have to find out how many people who are primarily playing PC would have otherwise bought a Nintendo console in order to play the games, as opposed to they would play the games if it was on a system that they had. And I think Microsoft right. and Sony kind of learned that uh, uh, probably a huge swath of PC players are not willing to dump money into a console just for, you know, maybe a, a game or two. Except and it's better to just sell them the game. But then it's different with Nintendo because it's like Nintendo makes a lot of first party games. A lot. Yeah. And uh, it's probably more accessible to get a maybe. Nintendo console. They're seem they're to be cheaper. cheaper and... They're always yeah, cheaper. and they're they have been for like twenty years at this point. Ever since the GameCube, they've always been like cheaper. So I'm gonna say probably not, but maybe yeah. ten years is a long time for it a gaming is landscape. Money to, change, to be had, so. I suppose. Yeah, yeah. So I don't think so, but maybe. But I, I, By I the still way, think not. Returnal is finally on PC. Woohoo! Highly recommend it. I've seen a lot of people recommend this Returnal. Apparently, it's a good I boy. Think it's a hard boy. Uh, Maybe some point. Eternal. Uh, yeah, like I do not know about this. What's it on? Is it on Steam? It is. Uh, I, uh, yeah, but it was like PlayStation it. before. Uh, I, yeah, I've never heard of this. At least I don't think I've ever heard of this. A lot of recommendations for it, so I'm curious about it. Um, I'll, I'll go to Steam and maybe wishlist it. My hunch tells me She-Hulk was bad. Scroat too. Reliable Scroat right there. Was. Still bad. Trust your, trust your Scroat. Um... The Ant Man. That's a. That's a. Uh, that's a. Um. Uh. I can't believe what. Sindri's brother. Um. Brock. 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 Is that that's the thing he says, right? He talks yep. about scrote. He does talk about his scrote. Yep. Yeah. Um, that Ant Man rotten score laughed my ass off. Yeah. Uh, makes you think. Uh, so it's real interesting when the score is low for a Marvel film, and they've been getting lower lately. I've noticed. Um. I, I mean, it, it seems, it feels like a change in the wind uh, that's gradually happening over time. We'll see. Wow. Yeah. I don't think, because I can't imagine Guardians is going to get shot on in the same way. It's like going to be a, gonna be a movie that is probably going to have heart. <laughs> so, which is, you know, that that's that's a that's a big that's a big help, isn't it? When a, yep. when a movie has heart. Irags, of the two designs of Maverick Hunter Zero, which do you think looks cooler? The X series design or the Zero series design? Um, could you copy paste that into uh, the text I thingy can. and I'll look that up? All right. Uh, carry on and I'll look those up. Uh, just wanted to point out that in the EFAP episode about Dead Space, someone in chat said, Nicole is looks someone's A is grandma. That is all. 
That's some incredible English. And you know what? Maybe she is someone's grandma. She was uh, late 40s, 50s, right? Mm. I Possible. mean, she's... I mean, if... Well, Tanya Clark is 51, I think. So she is possibly a grandma. Could but be. Could be. Damn, that's a... That's a gilf. Uh, Fat Geralt va Fancast. Oof. Uh, mm. Could be good for Fat Geralt. You gotta get that. You gotta get someone with that build, you know. Maybe yeah. Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan, Fat Geralt. But like, he's gotta obviously he's gotta get out of shape a little bit, Joe. But uh, I just I feel like that would be really funny. That's all. Because yeah, I didn't mean to imply that Joe Rogan is fat. I I just meant it'd be funny if he was he was that role, Henry Cavill in a fat suit. Yeah, <laughs> I'd be on board for that. I um, have a uh, Charles I Dads. <laughs> I think I have an answer on the uh, the Metro or sorry the Maverick Hunter Zero. This seems to be like a Mega Man thing. So I'll give you. I believe this is the. Um, X series, I think. It's kind of hard because the, the way they type it is a little bit confusing. And I think this is the Zero series. I think. Um, the naming, the way that this is named, like uh, Maverick Hunter Zero, X series or Zero series means I would type like Zero twice. But I, I, I'm, I think this is what they're referring to. Uh -huh. um, and if that's the case, I think I prefer the top one the x series um i don't like the boxy shoulder pads and i don't like the green nipple things and i i don't like even i i don't like how the in general how big the feet are i don't like that Doesn't you have green nipples um, on both of them but one has one. Oh um, no it has two. Oh, it does have a little one it has a little nip back there uh still i think i'd go with the first one i think it is more uh, I guess bubbly or curvy in a way. Um, however, while I was perusing, uh, I think I found actually one that I like a little bit better than both. <gasps> I, I prefer I prefer this one. I think that looks better. I think it looks a bit more um, overall cohesive in terms of a design. Uh, I like that the the hands and the feet aren't comically large, even though they technically are, but not so much as the other one. I just, I, I just think I just like this one the most. Um, I just kind of like it. That's the one I prefer. Whichever one that is. Uh, yeah. So yeah, there you go. Where did you train? On a farm. A fram. Classic, classic from a classic character. Um, have you played or heard of Square's HD 2D games? Octopath Traveler 1 and 2, Triangle Strategy, Live Alive, Live Alive, Live Alive, Live Alive remake? And if so, what do you think of them? Um, I've heard of Octopath Traveler, but I don't, I'm not really familiar with any of the, these games. I am afraid. I don't know if any of you guys are. Nope. I've played them. Octopath? Well, here you go. But that's the cool one that had that style. really cool um yeah the art style i remember is being really neat um so bravo uh for that rex do you take back your bolt action rifle statement no i don't bolt action rifles are virtually obsolete that's what i, I saw never... in comments i found interesting there was uh, someone breaking down big time about guns and someone i didn't realize i read that episodes. but i don't agree with it Oh, well, I was just going to go to the part where it's like he ha uh, Joel does not have his rifle after he uses it in the f in episode four. I'm not sure why he, he takes it. In, uh, he puts it in the safe house. He doesn't have ammunition for it. Not that rifle. I'm talking about the, the second rifle. The um, where does he lose that? Um, was, he I, should have it after yeah, the. I, uh, it was only once they highlighted it that I realized that happened. He uses it uh, when in, when he crashed the car. Kill those two four. guys, yeah. Um, and then we don't see him with it again until he picks up the the one with the optics from the old it's, man. It's strange. You think he'd quickly grab the guy's shotgun or the other guy's yeah. rifle? I guess they're trying to say they're you know they were stressed out, and of course with you know Ellie having to kill the guy, and they were trying to leave as quickly as possible. But still, grab it and go. Um, yeah. So I I would say that that's a flaw. He should be. I mean, there's there's his rifle. There's one like in that room. There are three long guns. Yep. 
take one of them. Yeah, no, I agree with that, yeah. Um, I hadn't even thought about it. I'd uh, completely forgotten that his gun was gone, I guess, because the next time he's in a fight, so to speak, it is uh, with a rifle. It's, my, just, it's just not his one. My opinion on bolt-action rifles is... Uh, so on my birthday, um, a friend and I went out to go do some shooting, and we primarily shot two um, long guns, one of which was my uh, Arsenal AK-74, uh, and it had a four time sight on it. And he had a, um, I think it was a Ruger American Ranch. And it was like tricked out all the way. It had a really nice scope on it. It had an excellent suppressor on it. We were shooting subsonic ammunition with it. So we're talking like best case scenario for what a bolt action rifle could be, essentially. Like you could shoot this without hearing protection. Um, it, was, it, was, it was really, really nice. And just the sheer amount of firepower difference is is really staggering um there there's there's just a reason that armies don't issue semi automatic or sorry bolt action rifles to people anymore like yeah i know they're they're neat and they are cool and they are definitely cool but if if i'm in bill's compound and i'm leaving and i'm bringing one gun it is going to be some sort of a self-loading weapon it's not going to be a bolt action um i've seen people fighting over that quite a bit um I've only got you to, you to defer to at this point. I give up. I, uh, I've seen so many arguments. And I'm talking like 17 in favor and against. And so I'm just like, you guys hash it out about the guns. Because um, there's still a lot of people, there's still people in chat right now trying to argue that bolt actions are definitely, uh, there's a reason to take them over. If you, stuff, so. I mean, in, in very niche cases, but I would almost guarantee that like, technically, bolt action rifles are and they're in the upper limits of it, they will be more accurate than a, a um, like a semi-automatic uh, weapon will be, uh, just by the way, the, the, the way it seals. Um, however, I think that the differences between those two are going to be so minute uh, that it, the shooter skill is going to be way more of an issue than that difference in accuracy. And the ability to, like, if you had, like, let's say that uh, the, the guard that he took the gun from, let, let's just say it was an M4 carbine, right? Just the sheer amount of firepower difference between that and a bolt action is going to be totally different. Um, that, that you'll want to be able to, if you need to, put more lead down range. Um, but I don't know what Joel was thinking. It wouldn't be my choice. Because remember, like, he has to... He has to shoot once and then he has to work it. And then, you know, in between shots, you know, you, you can't stay, you know, aiming down the sight and everything. It's there's a reason we don't use them anymore, uh, essentially. So, but yeah, I wouldn't be. Yeah. Chat probably says it's mostly for the tie into the game. It probably was just crazy. how um, much like there's so many different opinions flowing in in all different ways. It's just, uh, interesting to read them all about guns, guns, it, guns. Someone even asked why I put a four time scope on an AK-74. Wouldn't a red dot or two times be better option for the range style a gun is? Uh, no. Uh, I AKs are not inaccurate, especially an AK-74. And this is also an arsenal. It's a really good one. Uh, we ended up shooting like 110 yards or so with it. And I was like nailing shit at that range with this AK-74 and with this four time sight. So I don't know. This idea that it would be better with a shorter thing is, I don't know. Um, also, it's got irons on it, so... Mm. I don't know. Uh, Fringy, at least, how does Ant-Man compare to Phase 4? Uh, it is Phase 4. It's just a continuation of all of the same problems. The same kind of shitty writing. Really poor production. Um, it's, this, it's just a continuation of, of, uh, of the norm. Nothing's changed. It was as arbitrary as we thought it was, the distinction between these phases. Yeah, I'd say you'd say it fits right in. Oh, it's, oh, yeah, it's right at home with the rest of Phase 4. Fuck, Mary kill, boogie, movie, blob, and wings. I'm pretty yeah. sure we've been asked this before. Yeah, whatever, whatever answer we gave, <laughs> yeah. I assume it's the same, unless new information would change our minds, but I'm not privy to that information. Building so, this guy should make a podcast. Do it, guys. Absolutely, and call it... Um, Chunky Monkey? <laughs> <laughs> Probably enough, we'll actually be getting to that. Uh, someone is super chat about it. Also, super chats for Dead Space. Uh, those are recorded. They will be out um, at some point. Obviously, I try and space them out so I don't just flood you guys. 
But uh, yes, those are done. Um, this time you'll scream, I will find her. Yeah, he will. Oh, right. It's for Supergirl. Yeah. Uh, quickly, Super Chat. I know uh, someone said, I know AKs are accurate, but the 74, the AK 74, fires are smaller around than the AK 47. I was asking, why choose a site that is more for distant shooting when the 545 doesn't reach out as far? So I think you have just a misunderstanding of the way that these rounds are uh, are used. So AK-74 shoots a hefty one. It shoots a 7.62 by 39 millimeter bullet, which here, let me get, let me get it on screen. So and a, and a, a little comparison here, uh, 7.62 by 39 versus 5.45. That should autofill um, to give you a little bit of a difference here. Put them side by side. Copy and paste so you can sort of see. Now the 5.45 by 39 is on the left. 7.62 by 39 is on the right. You can instantly see the difference between the two, right? The bullet on the left flies much flatter and much farther, and it also has a lot less recoil. So if you're gonna be shooting at long distances, the 5.45 by 39 is gonna be easier to shoot with. It technically has less energy when it gets to the target, but it's gonna be a lot easier to shoot long distance with it. Whereas the 762 by 39 has a bit more heavy quotes stopping power for everything that that means. So uh, that would be why. That's your answer there. If you're shooting further, you generally want a faster, lighter bullet. Mm. Uh, bu 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 uh, favorite Breaking Bad episode? Also, High Rags. Hello. Hey. Uh, also Am I going to be boring? Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> boring is just true. That fucking episode's great. Obviously, a lot of huge payoffs happened in it. Uh, a lot of things that have been built up forever, but uh, I just think everything is, is the harmony in that one. Acting is top notch. The way everything rolls out. Big fan of uh, all the character work, obviously, and just um, the handling it in both writing and direction. Yes, yes, indeed, the direction is really good. Yes, the Johnson directing. Uh, don't hate the show as others. The action scene in episode 5 seems like complete nonsense. Where did the zombies come from? If the zombies can burrow through burrow through concrete... No, no, no. The, uh, the, the big old van thing, it explodes. And so it, like, fucks up all the concrete below. And the... the yeah, it, it like, sink... You can, you can see how it sort of sinks down into the, um, into the ground after it explodes. It probably opens up a tunnel. Yeah, and then they come on out of it. Yeah, and then uh, obviously they said before, like whatever sewer systems that are beneath Kansas City, like it's filled with infected, basically. So that amount of noise, the awareness related to the network element of the um, Ab Boys, I imagine that yeah, the, uh, the I mean that all seems to follow to me. A lot of people were saying it was very convenient. Um, I just it just felt like uh, you have. They want to kill them, and as a result, Joel shoots them. They fuck up and get blown up. Then that alerts infected. That all that all seems like cause and effect to me. Because uh, at first it crashes into the house, right? And it's, it seems kind of chill, but it's uh, obviously whatever fuck up that they crashed into. It, it does the thing with fuel, sparks, whatever have you, and then boom. Yeah, as for, yeah, as for its convenience, um... Like I said, I don't know if that should be considered. That's like an event result of an event result of an event result, if you know what I mean. Yeah, it didn't just happen randomly. Um, it did happen as a very direct result of other things that are happening and were set up. Um, as for its convenience, um, yes and no. I mean, ultimately, it gets Sam killed. Yeah, that's, that's, that's why I struggle with con convenient. Uh, contrived would and, probably and the Henry is a. You know, so it, it essentially gets Henry and Sam are killed as a result of that. Um, as are, uh, yeah, it, I don't know. I don't think I have an issue with it because it doesn't happen out of nowhere. And it was set up in the previous episode that there are, yeah, there, there are uh, infected underneath the city. Uh, so, yeah, and it's like, that, I mean, uh, that's why I had said. Aren't those all contrived, though? Like the things we just said. It's like, well, they all follow from previous uh, action. Yeah, consider we knew from the last episode Infected were beneath the city um, that Fedra used to be keeping the, um, the Infected at bay, and now that they've been overthrown, then it's been 
What what was it about? Like how many days? Hasn't been very long. Um, Hasn't been very long, but who knows if that's you know how long the gap is. Um, they you know they all the reasons why the truck was there and why Joel was there. There was all reasons for that. So I'm I'm fine with it. I think it was all set up decently. Uh, the majority I would of them certainly clickers. Put it in... Clickers are very sensitive to noise. It's a literal explosion, so they all get drawn to that. So you can imagine after the explosion, they're all sprinting to that area in the sewer from the echoes or yeah. whatever. That gives us time for characters to have the little back and forth, and then once they all get there and the network is is up and running, it's just like yeah, they all arrive as a big horde. Why don't they jump in their cars and flee, dude? They were coming out real quick. Yeah, they didn't think it was a problem until they start. I wouldn't be surprised. It's, uh, the truck falls in. And to be honest with you, I'm not even sure that's a better idea than aiming your guns and preparing to shoot them, which they do. And and I actually really like that about it, is that they gun down many of those things. Yeah, they just get overrun well, by them coming out many, all at once. Because eventually they have to they're, start reloading. Yeah. yeah, there's too many of them, and they're too close. That hole, and the, like, the distance between them and the hole was really short. They didn't have a lot of time to... You know, put the range of the guns to too much use, and so, honestly, I, we yeah, don't know how many survived. So I, I feel like okay, so a bunch of infected come out real quick, and then as you're running away, they get to you and kill you. Or alternatively, you can try to shoot them, and then they won't get to you. Yeah, it just feels Unfortunately, like Unfortunately, there's too many of them. If um if that was the options presented, uh, I would con very heavily consider as like I think we should gun them down. Uh, Especially when you do have as much firepower as they do. It's just, there's a lot of them. Thankfully, they don't react to the gunfire. Uh, they run towards the people with the guns and eat them. So I'm not sure what... Well, I just, if you rewatch the scene, they are gunning many down. The, the yeah, clickers are getting gunned down. Um, but there's just so many of them, that's all. Then you have them shoot and retreat, do both. They... I thought people said get in their cars. You said get in their cars. <laughs> Not you specifically, but someone did. Yeah, as for, if as for walk backwards foot, and shoot, many of them do. They'll catch, you. they'll catch you, though, anyway, because the whole thing with the infected is that there are a lot of overrides that make them do things that an average person couldn't do, even with, like, adrenaline. Like, they'll just keep running until they, like, fall down from exhaustion, right? From them, like, getting yeah, and, so but tired. Watch the scene. Click plenty of, really plenty of them, the fact that they try to do running and gunning, it starts, it's just, I don't see how that's going to, like, help you that much. The clickers are sprinting. Lit Funny yeah. enough, you should mention that literally and the and the shooting trip I'd mentioned earlier, um, my buddy was he was he had a he had a pistol. Uh, it was really nice. It was a little suppressed 22 with a red dot on it. And he was walking towards the target and shooting. And I remember him saying, damn, it's hard to shoot when you're walking. I was like, yeah, yeah, it, it's, yeah fucking, it's it's, it's hard, like, to, hard to shoot like when you're moving a lot more if you're running and shoot. This isn't Call of Duty. It is uh, not Call of Duty, yeah. And actually, in Call of Duty, you can't shoot while you run. And when you're walking and you're aiming down your sights, it goes all over the place. Even Call of Duty recognizes <laughs> that if you're moving and shooting at the same time, you're going to be really inaccurate. Well, yeah, Arma I mean, that's 3... the thing. I feel like a lot of people could say they did the smartest thing, which is all of you stay still, aim, focus, shoot as soon as it's, you see the targets. That's a shame. There were too many of them. Um, yeah, it was, it was they, kind they, of they ideal for the zombies in that sense. Well, yeah, and of course, as was highlighted before, there was a present problem, but Kathleen was more fixated on getting Henry that she was neglecting to deal with what could potentially be a huge problem, and the consequences were it got everything destroyed. Yeah. And I mean, someone could say, like, that's stupid. It's like, that's on character. That's who she is. She's, she's fucking vengeance-fueled. Yeah, if, um, if, if it's in the dark-ish, uh, the zombies come out that close to you and in a massive horde suddenly... That's kind of, you know, that's how they get you. If this was, if, yeah, if they were at the end of the street, it probably would have been a whole different story. But when they're that close, yeah. And we don't know how many people escaped. I mean, it's very likely that some of them in those cars that were running them down, they were just like, fuck this, it's over. And they drove away. But, um, um, again, but, like I said, we'll be drifting in and out of Lost of Us. Someone said, why didn't she kill Henry? I assume you're referring to the fact that she pulls a gun on him, aims, and then doesn't pull the trigger. If you watch the scene... She's struggling. She's even tearing up about it. And then uh, the, the truck starts to fall into the hole, which is actually how it ended up with the doctor in the previous episode. She's not quite uh, comfortable with just executing people. But when she gets angry, when she refocuses on like the whole this is unjust stuff, she, she finds it much easier. And this scenario, she just explained how she's going to be killing his kid as well. But yeah, she doesn't just do it instantly. She has trouble with it. But obviously they all get distracted by the, the truck falling in the hole. There's a lot of them, including Joel, seem to realize, oh, fuck. 
that might be something that's really bad. Wouldn't actually. the convenience be that the yep. truck exploded above something that it can open up? Or are these tunnels basically everywhere under the city? Well, I mean, it seems like it, right? They're in a residential area. Like, if there's networks there, I can believe that there'd be tunnels there. It's like a little suburb, right? Mm-hmm. And it's a big explosion. And it would be eaten away, I imagine, while it's well, all it's just burning. A, it's, um, a fire starts up and, and the fuel tank is And the main thing breached. is that the explosion is, like, a huge noise that would attract all of the infected. Yeah, and breach Absolutely. the ground. Yeah. It's not just it's the noise, it's the, it's the rumble. Explosion. Of it. Yeah, and the rumble, that's right, because remember, clickers and stuff use echolocation. As, uh, we were, <laughs> is, is when I was shooting with my friend, we, we bought Tannerite. Um, in America, you can buy explosive off the shelf. Uh, you mix it together, and it comes in these plastic jugs, and then when you shoot it with a fast enough bullet, it makes it go, like, Poof. and you, you, know, you don't just hear it, but you feel the little, the little, you know, explosion wave. Uh, so, yeah, so imagine that with a big old truck like that going off. Yeah, it's gonna rumble, and people are, uh, people are gonna notice. Well, so, again, it's the important parts of trying to think about conveniences, contrivances, and stuff like that. One of the main things is consequence. Um, well, it's, it's twofold, right? What was the cause and what was the consequence? We know what the cause is, and the consequence was still really negative for the characters anyway. I guess the best you could yes. say is that they're probably all going to die anyway. So, like, in a sense, it kind of saved Joel and Ellie. It's like, I mean, I guess, but they had to work really hard to get out of that situation. So it wasn't like a... And, and there was a huge cost well, as well. Imagine, yeah, imagine how the scene could have unfolded if right before Kathleen shoots Henry... Joel shoots her. Yeah, like, could you imagine? What, what kind of chaos would that have caused? Everyone probably would have been, like, they would have not at all cared about Henry at that moment. They would have been like, oh shit, someone's shooting at us and just killed Kathleen. We gotta get behind cover and figure out what's going on. I think, funnily enough, uh, they'd sent four men to go get Joel, but obviously they don't make it to get the house Joel. before the yeah. zombies happen. And I think they turn back. That's what actually boxes in uh, Henry and Sam and Ellie. I think got, you're right. Because yeah. uh, uh, I saw people saying, why aren't they running? Why aren't they running? And it's like, well, first of all, you've got an army of people with guns and they are behind a car. So it's just risking getting shot, which is very much what uh, Team Rebels, Team Kathleen would probably do. But post that, yeah, they are kind of surrounded at that point. Um, it's a pretty chaotic situation. I find it weird that it'd be like, just run. It's like, where? There's, there's, there's people with guns and infected all over the place. Um... Yeah, and and uh, I don't know. Like, uh, I'm. I suppose it is our job to sort of go through a lot of these things. Like, uh, I saw comments saying like, how in the world did Henry and Sam figure out what floor uh, Joel and Ellie were on? They were following them pretty damn close. So if you picture, um, this is all stuff that I think you're supposed to sort of just assume happened. Because why wouldn't it? Uh, Joel and Ellie are heading up the stairs. They even have light sources. And then Henry and Sam are at the bottom. They look up. You can see the light source slowly move up while they're moving up. Uh, keep an eye on the light source as soon as it's gone. Be like, right, you can probably vaguely guess at what floor that was. When you get up there, start checking the floors real quick. And yeah. then you stumble across some uh, broken glass and you're like, ah. Uh, like, this, yeah, this, be it. It's, it's pretty simple. Like, I, I, um, uh, but I saw people being like, yep, because the right has fucked it up. And it's just like, no. I don't, I don't see what, and, and if you remember It's really well, easy to infer a good faith read of how they found them. Like, it's real easy. It doesn't yeah, take a lot of um, work. Joel was fucking exhausted going up those floors as well. He was slow. Mm. Henry and Sam are not and, slow. And, uh, Henry and Sam, yeah, exactly. And again, that's just something that's consistent about him. They show him getting tired a lot when, uh, you know, when he's running around and stuff. Um... Oh yeah, so uh, watch the damn inside the episodes for The Last of Us. They're actually interesting. Also, love you. Oh. Uh, oh, I haven't you. watched any of those. Neither have I, but I've heard, a couple people in chat have been saying it, uh, that the bloater was practical with uh, CG touch-ups. Ah, uh, yes. There was a picture it. I saw it behind really the scenes good. of the guy in the suit. There's a lot of practical here. That was also, weird, too. Also, in um, chat, well, Joel exhausted XD... Now, you said a lot of silly shit during the, uh, the premiere, buddy. <laughs> but that's a pretty, that's a pretty ridiculous thing. Like, going up what? How many flights of stairs did they go up? 33 floors, I think it was? Well, yeah, and he's 56, man. Walking up 33, like, Oh, sh stories. sorry, I forgot. <laughs> he's also on 36 hours of awake time. That's right. <laughs> yeah, man, I don't know. I don't know what to sorry, say. Sorry Joel don't... isn't a superhuman, I guess. 
that should be tiring for anybody running upstairs it would be or just walking for upstairs. Like a fully trained firefighter going up thirty three flights of stairs. I don't know. Some of y'all need to go outside. Old man. Some of you need to like go out and like walk. I don't know. It's just it just if if that's not a justification for being tired, I just walk. Just go downtown to whatever city or anything and find a staircase in one of the many buildings that are likely around and just walk up. 30 story walk up 10 walk up five and then extrapolate and see how you feel extrapolate. yeah get a get a backpack and fill it with eh, 20 pounds of stuff and then walk up a staircase Jeez. wait that, uh... should, that should not be tiring for anybody is the point none of our other characters were huffing what the fuck Oh fuck off! I I I like how we can't assume not that maybe tiring when for anybody. Sam got up there, they might have paused to catch their breath. God damn I like how like we don't assume that that might have happened. It, that doesn't make you immune to listening to noises. So we saw... people are interesting. People can notice different things depending on where their mind is at at any given time. You're actually not. There, there's a whole bunch of like stimuli that's making its way to you, like sight, sound, and smell, and stuff like that. A lot of it is going unnoticed. You ever notice how, like, when you go out, if you live in the city, you go out into the country, you're almost struck by how quiet it is at night? Conversely, if you spend some time in the country, come back into the city, and then you go to sleep, and you're like, man, there's, like, a lot of cars. Like, I could just hear that. People just notice different things, depending on where their mind is at the time. The question is, can I believe that Joel, on no sleep, really tired, didn't hear, like, people who were carefully following him? Yeah, I can believe that. His You're hearing's not, not even yeah. that great. He's they they say his hearing isn't that great. He has one bad ear, so like it's even. He's actually got worse hearing than the average person. You know, I remember what? Henry this and Sam like, noticed it in the hallway, not even in the room. Seems yet. like a bit of cope right here. I don't know, dude. People are huffing I insane copium. <laughs> why are we? Why, is why, why would you even find that, that hard of this? I can totally believe that Henry and Sam managed to sneak up there. And get them and, and, and catch them by surprise. I can believe that. That's well, not and, unreasonable. And then to say, like, nobody else was exhausted. It's like, so the comparison is two children and a guy who is, like, I mean, Henry seems to be, like, what, 100 and, 150, 200 pounds area? He seems very Probably athletic. taking it much slower, too. That, too? Because yeah, like, if, if they're looking at every floor, not knowing if that's the one they stopped at, they're probably going to be taking it really slow. They all had a good night's because, sleep. Yeah. Compared to Joel, like, I don't know, what's happening? I don't know why anybody would, there, though, no, to be fair, like, there were, I was, I was baffled by how many people are still saying, like, Bella Ramsey isn't a good actress. I don't know how, like, you can have the performances in 4 and 5 and be like, yeah, you know, you're not really selling me on these emotions that you're feeling. I mean, she's crying, like, that alone. How um, many actors well, are that was like, kind of the point I was trying to make in the episode. Um, even, that, even like crying, you know, on command. Excluding whether we individually uh, sort of let people know we believe, like the the performance, which is all on us to to say. I I feel like she's passed all the metrics that we could possibly generate. She yeah. represented different emotions, and she nailed it when she was pushed to an extreme. Uh, crying equals acting XD. Is that a meme or like like you're memeing, right? Some of yeah, you are crying like crying is acting. Some of you are like, incredibly out of faith with this show. I don't understand. To, some of y'all need to fucking oh, chill, on, seriously. She's doing well. Like, especially in terms of the range of emotions over the last couple of episodes in particular. From just, like, very sort of playful, happy scenes to these incredibly, like, tragic, scary moments as well. It's like, I don't know, there's, there's, some of that, there's a lot of uh, range there within that character. I've seen people say Pedro Pascal is not a good actor either, which blows my mind. Can't believe that's that people are saying that. True. Not he was amazing he in the actor, fucking Wonder Woman movie. Actor. Yes, he was. Wonder Woman, Game of Thrones, obviously Pascal, Narcos gets references. Very the time. different person. Yeah, Narcos as well. The unbearable way of massive talent. People should check that out if they mm -hmm. haven't. Yep. Um, yeah, these are. I just don't know to. I can't do anything with these arguments. Like. <laughs> I don't know, man. It's cope. You like people saying we're coping in favor of the show. You're coping against it. All right. We have all these references. We have all these arguments. All these observations. All these accurate descriptions of the show. And then people are like, "Dude, de de deaf representation." And like, guys, I gonna, don't. I. You guys, I, you guys are gonna have to. Some of you guys, man. Some of you guys have got to get your brain cleansed of the was, mind um, rot that is the culture war. That's it was really weird because uh, a lot of people I saw the sentiment that like, wow, you've taken away the chance for the actor to even deliver these lines now. And uh, 
I think I was going to call you, Friggy, when we were like, I, well, wait. I think I said, do you think that Charlie Cox got stripped of an opportunity to deliver performance because he has to do, like, the sort of blind eyes, kind of like the very still eyes? It's like, you know what? It's interesting. Also, I'm pretty sure the, the kid who plays uh, Sam is actually deaf. So, yes. like, nothing oh, about interesting. that. Um, but, but regardless, even if he wasn't deaf, it's like, you understand that, like, you applying certain restrictions on an actor can, like, just enable them to do more, like, unique things that you wouldn't typically be able to do. If you can't talk, it's all got to come through in body language, facial expressions. Yeah, his eyes. It's a restriction that oh. enables uh, new acting opportunities, basically. It's, um, it's really weird because we're supposed to advocate for how even if you have a masked up character, you can still yep, use exactly. strong expression. You guys can't be agreeing with me when, I, when I'm when i ranting about Halo and taking off the helmet. You can't agree with me on that and then simultaneously be like, now I'm not saying you guys are doing that, but I'm pretty sure yeah, there are a couple of people. It's like, yeah, it's 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 uh, it's uh it like takes away their ability to convey it through dialogue. It's like there's other ways of conveying information than just dialogue. And we're big fans of dialogue on EFAP, <laughs> but there's other ways too. Yeah, and uh, I, I I was really happy with both the actors for Henry and Sam. Um, I think they did great, considering they only had an episode uh, to fully realize those characters. And like people say, like it's uh, making him deaf is pointless. Like I mean, it, it, not only does it have purpose in the show, it has repercussions. Like the the way that they communicate with that board, and you get that payoff of sorry from. Ellie, and one of my regrets is we didn't talk more about that in in the initial coverage. But to be fair, that it's we we are literally have minutes to absorb and think about it. But um, I think it's just an interesting dynamic on Henry and Sam's relationship, the way that they talk, the way that they you know interact with one another generally. You know the fact that Henry knows his brother is deaf and has to is the first one to react to noises and then confirms it with Sam, and how they communicate and how. You know uh, uh, how Ellie kind of communicates with him as well, not knowing you know the sign language and stuff. It's like I just like don't you think it's just a kind of interesting that we sort of get that little dynamic, even I if we were to say it adds nothing to the show. Like let, let's just say it adds nothing to the show whatsoever. Like don't you think it's a little they just neat that we get something a little bit different as opposed it's, to the ninety nine point nine 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 percent of characters in fiction who can hear. Maybe maybe we get. Maybe yeah. get one that isn't, you know, exactly the same as them all. I mean, the well, fact I mean, that we you, got... you know how it works for us. Just you have to present why it's an issue before we can concede it's an issue. And I don't see anything that could be highlighted other than, I mean, the main complaint I've seen people say is that it's clearly there for like ESG points or something. Which, but I need, I need an in-universe reference. What has it done to the story to make it worse? What is ESG? ESG. Yeah, it's something to do with like the more representation you have, the more approval you get. And some, I, I don't know enough about it, my, but I'm not saying it's not a real thing. It could very well be uh, why they did it or why not. They did it, but I don't. Efab tries to do the whole like we we take it from in universe, so you have to tell us like yeah. what the downside of having him be uh, deaf in universe to the story. What's the detriment? That's what we need to know. Well, I mean, there are, there are deaf people who exist. So yeah, well, like, I, if, I guess if we so found I'm, out that um. People saying, why is he deaf? It's like, why isn't he? I don't know. Why is anybody anything? Well, yeah, <laughs> like... why, if someone said why, um, you know, in Arcane, for example, why is uh, Caitlyn a lesbian or something? I'd just be like, um, I don't, I don't know. Are... Why, uh, why isn't she? Yeah. Well, let, like, let's just take this a step further. How come Henry and Sam are black? What does that add to the show? Kind of a good question. Why? I mean, what, what do we, I mean, when is this, how, it's like, what, what are we it's doing? Very though because people don't tend to say that for characters white like why are they white well i guess some people do now but like I don't, can we just talk about the stories please that's all i want i just want to talk about the writing and the characters so yeah i'm fine um i'm fine with with all these choices as long as they don't detriment the story and i don't think any of these have so far i don't know as I, it just it, like people need to fucking calm down like everything it's it's legitimately getting like with the dead space stuff the dead space stuff it was fucking ridiculous and silly that was. <laughs> and it was like it was like fucking hell am i gonna be so black pilled that like everything is fucking well like using using a, a character you know having the voice actress act the character is that woke now like fucking hell some people just this brain rot has got to be cleansed we've got to chill out 
It's like we got oh, there's a gay couple. Duh, 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 duh. Oh, a deaf character. Duh, 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 duh. Well, uh, oh, uh, if I can, a bathroom sign. Duh, I'd duh, like duh. to throw in I, I, when when someone says I like Isaac's got a bad design because he looks like a generic white man. That that is terrible as an argument, and it's also Wait, racist. Stop. But just saying. <laughs> Can we stop? I uh, don't like it. I've just never been compelled by these arguments in either direction. Like, uh, mm. um, so you know, hopefully that's helpful in terms of like we need um, we need the in universe stuff. Give us the in universe stuff. It's like so in a nutshell, they've successfully shifted the Overton window for many. You know, if that means that we get the occasional deaf person in media, you know, maybe that's not so bad. What Sorry, is the like, what do you want me to say? So. Um, like, is it literally that you're just not allowed to have deaf people? Well, I saw someone, someone in chat did say, like, the deaf agenda, lol. This is like, I, I, I think you're okay. Like, I don't, I don't think, there's no, I don't, I don't think, think there's deaf propaganda or something. To, like, you'll be fine. You'll be alright. The Overton window on deaf people. <laughs> I, I don't understand. know. <laughs> like, they get to exist or something? I don't know, guys. Just fucking chill. Like, that. I don't know. I, I, also, I, I someone said straw man. Up. It can't be a straw man if it doesn't apply to you. If somebody... And also, if it was said that it was, it's not a straw man, is it? Yeah, don't worry. We're we're referencing thing we've seen. We're I'm not a, we're not making. Yeah, shit I'm. Up. I I ain't saying nothing that I haven't already seen. It's for um. From people. Oftentimes, for account what benefits that I don't right, apply a name to it. Straw man is oversighted. Yeah. It's as, it's as, it's more oversighted than ad hominem. I'm so sick of people saying straw man when it's when it's not. This is literally shit people not say. Straw man. If somebody has said it, first and foremost, it's an actual argument. And if it doesn't apply to you. Then why are you saying straw man if you didn't say that? Yeah, it's, it's it's not anyone who thinks that we're talking about you when you haven't said it. Don't you worry, not talking about you. But it did happen, and what I'm referencing, I found funny when someone said the deaf agenda in, in, in chat that they were responding to that person. But there's no need to name the person. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Uh, I'm just interested in the arguments. That's all. Um, and there's something interesting as well. Uh, that just came in and said, by making Sam deaf, they make it so Henry is his gate to the world. He doesn't know about Kathleen. He's oblivious, and he's just a child who wants to play. It's a really interesting idea that all of Sam's mm. information comes di directly from Henry, and Henry will change reality. Uh, like one of the good examples they show is um, Sam said, "What's going on?" And he says, uh, "They're going to help us escape." And then he looks at them and goes, "Right." Like, well, even the final in, in in the end when Kathleen was in the street about to shoot Henry, uh, Sam had no idea what they were saying. Yeah, that's the thing. He often looks a bit like confused, and then Henry will feed him a world that's a lot kinder than the the reality. Um, where were we? Uh, when's Fringy uploading his Ragnarok VODs? Was waiting to watch those on YouTube when I saw him uploading 2018 on Cosmoronic. Yeah, sorry, I dragged my feet on that. I'll get onto it. I think, uh, the main thing is I just need to compile part one and two together because I had, like, the stream crash part way, so I'll just need to throw them in, like, Vegas. Mm -hmm. Splice them together and I'll start throwing them up. Sorry on the delay. Um... Ellie thought her blood was medicine because she, as a, chi a character, represents the childish innocence that is worth saving in this broken world. Theme. I, I wasn't, I'm not even making a theme. I, I think that's fair, but I would just say it's, it's in character for her to do anything she can do desperately to save Sam because she knows that as soon as Joel finds out, he's dead. Yeah. Um, and what she knows, if, you know, if she thinks that her blood is like a cure or something, then I don't know. The idea that her putting the blood on the wound might do something. I mean, who knows? She's probably having a really tough emotional time right there. Is she being purely rational? No, I don't know if I'd be purely rational. I mean, if that was you, like, what do you think you do? And then think, is that what I'd actually do? Um, I think a lot of the times people tend to forget <laughs> how impactful stress and a lack of time can be uh, if you like imagine having an emotional attachment to someone like that and then you know i then actually you know try to put yourself in that situation and it's, it's totally different what if people sometimes make choices that if they were given more time to ponder it they'd be like all right that's probably not going to do anything or that's not going to work or maybe this is a bad decision people make bad decisions when it comes to like, the relevant part is, are they in-character decisions? Are they something that you believe that that person would do? Yeah, do I got... believe that Ellie would, like, with her limited understanding of, like, how everything works, make some attempt to try and save Sam, even if it's, like, misguided? 
because she knows what will happen if she tells Joel. It's like, yeah, I can believe she'd do that. Yeah, consider, and I'm not saying you're, I'm not saying you or anyone else is doing this, but consider that you are sitting in a place of safety and leisure, judging the actions of people who are under incredible emotional and uh, and stressful duress. So, um, just just consider that. Completely unbelievable worst rewrite so far. Are you like, again, are you memeing or like, are you serious? Well, I thought this one was funny. Your defense of Kathleen not shooting Henry and Sam right there was weak. It's like, so counter it. Counter so it, yeah. yeah. Don't say it's bad. Because we I'm hear like, this a lot. It's bad. It's, it's, it's worse than the game as well. I mean, like, it, it's just argument. like when someone says it's cope, it's like, yours is cope. Like, cool. Now we're not getting anywhere. Yeah, it's <laughs> gotta, it's, gotta counter it. Uh, and then I can you're like, overhyping oh. it you're underhyping it yeah when <laughs> someone said when you were 14 did you guys think mixing blood wouldn't be dangerous I don't think most 14 year olds have any um, clue that blood is well, wait. like, like yeah, blood I, legit. I think it's, there's like a component being forgotten here even if she knows mixing blood is dangerous if she believes he's that doomed. she can cure him with it um that saves his Especially life when he's doomed like yeah, she does so, so what I'm getting at is if I was told, say there's an unconscious rags on the floor dying of some Glurg disease and I've got I immunity to it, <laughs> and they tell me you're gonna have to mix your blood with his and we don't have any way to do this scientifically beyond just fucking doing it and it'll save his life, then yeah, I'm gonna do it. I know the dangers of blood mixing, but if I believe that'll save him, then yeah, I'll take the risk, of course. Kathleen wanted to kill Henry. She had Henry on her side. She could have killed him, but she didn't. I like how that doesn't account for any of the explanation that Muller provided of what was happening in the scene at the time. You can't present those arguments independent yeah, I... of the references that Mauler presented. You need to counter those ones. So the initial argument was Kathleen wants to kill Henry. She had him. Why didn't she kill him? My response was she struggles to pull the trigger with the doctor. She does have a strict problem with just outright killing people, but she can rive herself up to do it. And uh, as she's thinking about it, she does everything very slowly. She's staring at him, and then she gets distracted by something behind her, and then that's it. And uh... Your response was the initial argument. Yeah, you've just repeated your argument. You haven't Done anything else? Oh, let me know when you uh, update it, so to speak. Uh, Rags, in the last of us, episode 5, the soldiers all have M4s with the ACOG sights despite the apocalypse starting in 2003. They should have long barrel M16A4s with iron sights, as was the standard then. Great show otherwise. I had considered that. Um, I was thinking earlier on if the apocalypse was in, what, 2003? Yep. Was it, if the apocalypse is in 2003, should they have M4s? And, you know, what kind of sights would they have on their rifles? But I, because I kind of just forgot what they had. So there might be a lot of validity to that as a complaint. Um, because I don't think, uh, uh, st so there the M4 carbine was, oh, it's a, the U.S. Army acquired a total of 500,000 M4 carbines since the M4 series was introduced in 1993. So I don't, it seems like the M4 would be around, um, but uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think that would be an issue. Let me look at the ACOG site. Well, while we're doing around. that, hold on. There, there are plot holes in this show that you would tear apart if it were a Star Wars movie. The Last of Us must be a blind spot for you. Just provide one, and then we might be yeah, able to uh, do it. Tell us what we missed. We might be correct because. Uh, yeah, the, the, the Trijicon ACOG was first introduced in 1987, so there'd be, there'd, there'd be some out there. Um, potentially, I think that it's, I think it's okay. It looks like the dates on some of these check out, but, uh, I mean, you do see a bunch of people with, um, like, a, like with, just with typical bolt-action rifles and hunting shotguns and things. Like the three people who were in the ambush in Episode 4, I think two of them had bolt-actions and one of them had a shotgun. Pretty pretty traditional hunting slash civilian firearms. And it seems like all the military guys have the more uh, military grade hardware. So I think that checks out, um, but that was just from a quick, uh, quick little Google glance, um, but I think that checks out, but it's argument, a decent question to raise. Yeah, uh, the argument has updated. He said, I'm talking about when they were behind the truck. So the reason they don't unload on them while they're behind the truck is that would be a waste of ammo. Uh, probably. Plus, apocalypse. Kathleen is talking to them. Not even probably. There's no point they're in cornered. unloading and hoping they... They would hit them if they all shot at the truck eventually, but why yeah, do that compared to, come out, I'll execute you with one pistol bullet? Yeah, what? if you're... in with, with how much Kathleen seems to be interested, and she's up front, and she's talking to them, you're gonna let the leader do the leader's thing. 
Yeah, and she also yeah. wants to um to make it clear to him she knows why he did it, but that it's fucked up to have done it. Her, um, and, and she's not. I, I, I could see myself making that same speech to somebody. Why did you decide that my brother's life is worth less than yours? And uh, you know the answer, but of course you have to understand that something else will happen as a result of that, more than likely. Uh, six guys walked past the truck more. They did, and they would have come back then when the uh, the infected arrived. Um, it just seems reasonable. I don't know. Because um, I'll be honest, like a lot of this stuff didn't uh, strike me as something we needed to explain. I'm gonna be honest, like so, like th that's why I'm kind of doing the stream as well. It's like if there's any questions, we can sort of wrap some things up. Uh, chat said something I agree with. Uh, would you not, after chasing someone for that long, want to gloat just a little before killing them? I'm like, yeah, probably. Yeah, she, like I said, she wants him to know this why. Time, yeah, yeah. This, this is this is total vengeance. Villain speech here, right? Yeah. This is just talking when you've got someone cornered like, what, right before. As I said, it annoys me about Abby. Uh, if I were Abby, we said this when we were covering Lost of Us too. I'd be like, why did you kill my dad? Tell me. Yeah, I would want to know. I would need to know. Tell me why. I need to know why. Why did you do that? I need to know why. But she doesn't, and you know that if Because if I she kill had... you now, then I have no closure on that. And imagine she said why, and Joel said because they were going to kill, and he maybe he refers to her at that point as my daughter, and they'd stolen everything from me, and they told me that no matter what I do, like, they're killing her. Oh, I saw, I saw that, David. We're approaching Huck's ignorance now. Oh, it, it's, it's retracted, but I saw it. Yeah, I, I mean, that came, it, up in, uh, that came up in the live chat as well, if anyone was curious about the difference. So when someone does something for an emotional reason that's not pragmatic, it has to line up. When you say that Hux is arrogant and that's why he didn't shoot them, that doesn't make sense. He, he, if he was arrogant, he would shoot them. You, you understand? It's like, like, it's so clear. You're chasing someone for this long for an extremely personal reason for vengeance. You would absolutely, it would be totally normal for you to linger on that moment of victory and to make sure that that person knows before they die oh, yeah, sorry. why this is happening. I'm fine with Hux uh, announcing he's defeated them before he fires. That's fine with me and the TLJ. What I complained about was him choosing, to, out of two targets, Target. it was a ship or the planet. The planet's not fucking moving. He shoots the planet. You should have shot the ship. This is pretty straightforward. Um, and, and you know, the, the response to that was he's arrogant. That doesn't even make sense. Arrogance wouldn't make him do that. It's like, a, yeah, it's it's incongruent. It's like a non sequitur. Meanwhile, um, Earth, yeah. you know, if, if that she is vengeful and, and spite driven towards this particular person and would basically want to draw out this moment to get answers and to derive some level of satisfaction from the power that she has over him, it's like, yeah, that all just seems pretty congruent to me. The planet is moving, every planet moves. You are kidding me, right? <laughs> <laughs> you gotta put Kappa faces after stuff like that, otherwise I'm gonna, like... It. <laughs> Everyone knows the Earth is flat and stationary. Come exactly. On, Everything in space moves except the planet. The... That's true. It revolves around us. We're the center of the universe. And the ice wall holds all the water in. Everyone knows this. Uh, South Park new episode starts. Randy was tired with how woke Hollywood is and how it killed the Marvel franchise and how Avatar 2 sucks. Sounds familiar. We should watch that. Oh, that uh, for me, yeah, the new season of South Park has started up. That'll be funny. Sounds funny anyway. That will be fun. I've seen virtually no South Park. I've seen like two episodes. Damn. Yeah, I've Damn. seen like, it's kind of like The Simpsons, um, Futurama, South Park, like all those shows. I just have barely actually seen any. I've yeah. caught a lot. You catch a lot of snippets just through it being in popular culture, references, memes, and things. But just mm -hmm. sitting down and actually watching it, seen I've seen very, very little. Um, hey, Efab, did you guys check out Sitch and Adam's show last night? They had a debate with organized chaos and actual fandom, and they said a lot of BS. They also said that you guys would not debate them. So, um, in case anybody was curious, we ran, uh, we we ran a policy, and it's been edited over time, as does with all policies. I think at first, when we started EFAB, it was like, welcome one and all, we will debate all. And then eventually it was like, actually, okay, we won't, we're not going to do it with people who have mental issues of any kind. You probably know what episode this was prompted really early on. But yeah. we realized like, oh shit, okay, no, the, we're going to avoid people that we think are a little unhinged. People that have like hyper bad faith, people are, uh, who are, there's a risk of something happening if they were to talk to us. So we, uh, we don't do that. We, and then um, it was like a year or two ago that we 
uh, had covered different people, we saw different things, and we were like, oh, another one to add is if people are saying things about us with the deliberate intent of trying to talk to us, like that's their goal, then we're not going to entertain it. Like they, they have no other goal than to just try and get a step up the ladder or to try and just get to us to, you know, to say whatever. Yeah, um, some people are insanely bad faith and they only want to score points and try to get clips and stuff and they're not interested in really having a conversation. So those people aren't really good to have discussions with because there wouldn't be a discussion. I mean, if you saw the organized chaos and uh, talk with was Eric July. <laughs> Look, um, I all, all the power to everybody who wants to have the more meme discussions. I actually I respect the hell out of Eric July. And of course, out of such a good friends of EFAP. Um, welcome to us or whatever they want. Uh, we really, really, really want to have discussions that um, are about like understanding and shit back and forth. Uh, I feel like I don't need to justify this as, as true with all of the, the many times that we've not only had really good conversations with people we've covered, but also several of them have become contributors, so to speak, to EFAP. Um, you know, we've we've had a few that go off the rails here and there, but like that's just not at all what we're trying to do. Yeah, um, I know we're... you guys would find it entertaining as hell. That's just not what we. That's not our thing. Um, <laughs> I have seen clips. <laughs> yeah, I. Some of the people say it's clout farming. Is like, yeah, ab absolutely. Like these people are like absolutely like the dregs of intelligence. Like they're just not capable of having discussions. Well, I, just, I want this to be stuff. made aware just... in isolation because I could fucking believe it when I when I was made aware of this. Of course they've called us all of the, the ists and isms under the sun, as is per usual. Um apparently uh the other one, not um not organized chaos, he actual fandom? He called Eric July a chunky monkey. Hey. I can't believe I cannot believe like what in the uh, now, I, I want I want people that. to understand. <laughs> we we are okay a lot of the time with some harsher, more edgy jokes, but that one I was like, no fucking way, because do you, do you not sure. know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then but we called when he was a clown person. So, when he clarified, yeah. he said, "Oh, oh no, no, no! I did that because I was trying to say he's fat." It's like a what? chunky. <laughs> If anything, that's worse. You just made that it take, worse, that man. Takes care of the, that takes care of the first half, sort of. Jesus but like, Christ. Like, jeez, oh my god. And, uh, and then he said, I googled it. It's not related to racism. I googled it. <laughs> I confirmed that what I said wasn't racist. Google has my back. I was losing it, and then, as if to not make the situation even fucking funnier, he said, "I, the, I have friend, I have a black friend who said it's it's not racist." <laughs> <laughs> okay, no. well, if that's the defense that uh, is okay, then uh, we'll make sure to bust that out whenever we need to. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, and he said he was quoting Iron Man. <laughs> You cannot see this is where I mean, you can't pay for shit like that. That is something you can only get from the kind of shit that uh, Eric and, and Adam and Sish can get into. But I couldn't fucking believe it. I thought it was so hilarious, and it's so weird to be purity tested so hard by people who do shit like that. You're like, hey, hang on, isn't that like against all of your rules? But uh, okay, it's fine. It's fine because you didn't intend um, anything hurtful. That, well, of course, doesn't apply. The part, right? Like, that was intended. Well, what I'm trying to get at is, like, I thought they were against fat phobia or whatever. Well, I, I mean, I don't. I, in any don't case, have... all of that? in any what case, I you... thought the their rules forbade stuff like that. And, and the, to use the argument, like, my intention was this, 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 so it's okay. It's like, you never care about people's intentions. So, what is this? Like, rules for the, not for me, I suppose. But... Go check it out, I suppose, if you guys want. It is a fucking disaster, and I'm fine with, uh, they can clown themselves on all shows if they really want to. Um, it, it, it's, uh, like I said, big respect for, for Eric to actually put up with, he did like a three and a half hour conversation or something, I was like, I don't know how you did that, man. <laughs> Iron Man pass. And, uh, they do go to, like, angry blows at some point as well. Uh, I think... Uh, the Adam and Sitch are, are said to be the most disgusting people they've like talked to, and that they they they're worse than the people calling everything woke because they go to bat and cover for those people. Um, <laughs> the Iron Pass. 
It's a uh, it's a fucking weird world we live in, but yeah, we're we're more than happy to just carry on covering uh covering stuff like the Last of Us or video games and stuff. Yeah, and Matt, yeah, we we got Atomic Hearts coming up soon. Uh, obviously, wow, Resident Evil Four, yeah, Mando, kind of... Last of Us. Mando's real close. Mando's two weeks away, guys. <laughs> we got it's stories coming out the uh, coming just out them. The some of them is the pipe. Some of them is delivered kindly to our door. Anyway. Uh, Reggie Phil's aim once said, "If a game is not fun, why bother?" This begs the question: Does a game need to be fun to be worthwhile? Uh, that's certainly the Nintendo sort of modus operandi, but I don't think that that's a statement that should apply to like the whole medium because fun is kind of like a weird term. Fun, I, to, I yeah. think, fun has a really positive vibe, and you would say like Nintendo makes fun games. That's like what they do, um, but like. You know, is uh, is Spec Ops the Line a fun game? It's like, not really. It's an engaging game. It's an interesting game. But is it a fun game? Like, is Papers Please a fun game? Mm. Uh, Hotline Miami a fun game? And like, the Dark uh, Descent is that fun? It's like, yeah, uh... exactly. It's uh, yeah, it's it's um. um and if I'm being a little harsher, I might go as far as saying fun is almost as useless as saying something's boring. Um, I think the thing is more detailed. A... I know what he means. No, I, I know, know too. What, I um, know what Reggie means. But it, this is the quickest way to get across probably the idea of like, poor gameplay loop is uh, satisfying because it'll encourage the player with these rules and they will have satisfying and, and, and relative sort of results as long as their skill level is reached. But there's a skill floor and ceiling for how well players can play, but also a limit on how right, far so things will go was wrong. Reggie, was Reggie's name written properly and you just misread it? <laughs> Uh, let me have a look. It's Re Reggie Fizeme. That's his name. <laughs> you write Phil's a me, I think. I said aim. <laughs> oh, okay. But um, no, I've, yeah. I've never heard that before. So I've heard Reggie. You, you never heard? Oh, okay. Well, yeah, it's Would Reggie you... Fizeme. I just have always heard him called Reggie. Yeah, I couldn't. Have yeah, told you what he his is Reggie. Was. He is. He is just Reggie. How much is Nintendo paying you for it? Look, all right. I only know two Reggies. Nintendo. I only know. One Reggie is alive and one Reggie is dead. We have Reggie, the Nintendo guy, and we have mm -hmm. Reggie, the pet snake from Indiana Jones and um, the... Um, Ark, uh, the oh God, what was the first one? The Ark of the Covenant. So, uh, the, well, what was you the first Raiders one called? Of the Raiders, Raiders of the Lost <laughs> Ark. I just couldn't remember Indiana the name Indiana Jones and uh, the Ark of the Covenant. And the Ark of the <laughs> Covenant, which is not, in, which is not inaccurate. But um, uh, it's yeah, just the funny. It's actually very inaccurate. Yeah, it's pretty it's funny. inaccurate. <laughs> What's weird is that people are gonna say, "Oh, it's a Biden moment." When I remember the name of the fucking snake. <laughs> yeah, that is a Biden. <laughs> to remember the snake, but not the movie. <laughs> memory. Yeah, exactly. Um, I think that's more just funny. It, it sounded like your brain was like, "Nah, -ha, not gonna give it to you." Like the name of the film, but it knew it. It's just not gonna let you. <laughs> You're like reaching at a high shelf, and it's like, nope. Um. This stupid chat on EFAP. Thanks for the great content. Hi, Rags. Oh, hello. Thank uh, you. And you're welcome very much. Glad you're liking it. What's everybody's dream gun? Must be a real gun and price doesn't matter. Oh, also, favorite World War II gun and why? Um, dream gun? I don't know. Um, if it's in terms of just simple historical value, that would be a really difficult question to ask in terms of, I don't know, if I had to combine like historical value and my appreciation for it with maybe like the, the fun of shooting it. I don't know. It might be like, um, I don't know, probably like a, like a, one of the, one of the Sturmgewehrs from World War II or something like that. You know, something that's really, that's really rare. I always love the PPSH. Kind of iconic. In all the games when I play with it. It seems like such uh, a MP4. fucking crazy gun. I like uh I like the M1 Garand. That's always been really fun. Yeah, those are those are definitely uh pretty affordable. They made a bunch of them. Uh so you can get your hands on those pretty uh pretty easily. Um You mean MG forty two? MG forty two? Jeez, I can't the even AR. imagine just the ammo cost of putting <laughs> what were those eight millimeter Mauser rounds through a gun that has like a nine hundred rounds per minute rate of fire fucking hell um plus the belts you'd have to deal with the belts and that you'd have to make sure that you had all the the links for the belts on them that would be fun though and i don't think that um i don't think they took i don't think they took magazines those mg42s um but 
I've what never was the ever thought one? about what a, a well. So the first question was the dream gun, and the second one was like favorite World War Two. Like, but they weapon. did say dream gun had to be real. <sighs> yeah, dream gun that's had right. to be real. And what's my? I mean, I have no answer gun. for you. I there is no dream gun. <laughs> I don't. I don't mm. know. I probably. I, I just want something mechanically satisfying. I guess. Um, I definitely well, one people. that has really cool like reload animation, but for real life. <laughs> Yeah, like, um... Look at how my brain is just video games. That's all I got for, Yeah, like... I, 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 that's my experience with video games, too. Um, I wouldn't mind... Uh, they're called M1911s, right? The the pistols? Just for the... Yeah, yeah. Just very, the, very... It, it feels like the quintessential the pistol. Maybe gun, yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, Spaz 12 I... was really cool in, in Modern Warfare 2. <laughs> it would legitimately be... Like, is a good answer. If you came across, like, a, a, a 1911 that was in service in World War II, that would be an excellent choice. Um, Wait, the model uh, 1911, the, the akimbo shotguns from Modern no. Warfare 2. The right, model wait, 1887? What, oh, they were the 18... What, they were the 18... Yeah. The 1911 is... Damn it, I'm, now my brain's... Uh-oh, whoops. I'm mixing <laughs> them up. I'm confused. Hmm. I, I might unironically... I would... I think I would really probably enjoy having a... A Desert uh, Eagle? It can shoot through <laughs> anything? <laughs> Uh, a Thompson or a Grease gun would be really neat to have. Oh, a Grease gun would be that be interesting. Yeah. Those shoot uh, 45 ACP and nine millimeter, so you'd be able to get your hands on the ammo really easily, uh, and they'd probably be super fun. Um, but yeah, it's a uh... Diddy Kong's banana gun. <laughs> of course, I'd love to have a Sturm Gewehr. Um, maybe a yeah, I don't know. There's a whole bunch. That would be interesting to have. Um, they only got a season two. What a wonderful timeline we're in. I've seen the mm. theories that it, oh, it was always having a season two, that they likely have already made several episodes of season two, and that this is just like Batwoman got a season two. Like, the, the bizarre things happen. A lot of people want to blame people hate watching it, quote unquote, for this. I don't believe it. And I, you can't convince me that hate watching it is actually encouraging people to go and fucking watch it for enjoyment. That doesn't make sense. I mean the 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 um in the ratio. I mean, there's no way that the amount of people hate watching it is gonna be like most people probably watch that show because they were just like normies, legitimately curious about this weird Velma show. Um, yeah, but I, yeah, um, I've never really given too much credence to the whole do not hate watch thing, especially I, I, if it only spreads the word on how terrible it is. I'm just curious. Maybe there are a few people in chat who've done this, but. Have you ever found yourself watching coverage of something and being like, man, I really want to see this in isolation. I'm going to pay for that privilege because I think it looks so bad. Does that happen a lot? Because it just feels like it doesn't happen a lot at all. And, and I can't imagine that's outweighing the sheer, like, unfathomable weight of the criticism being shoved at that show from everyone. You know what I mean? Like, like how could that... I got you. I, I have to imagine Dispru, for example, he has taken away far more sales and views from Velma than he could ever generate. Surely. You would think so. Because uh, some people would be like, you know, you guys helped Rings of Power. I'd be like, did we? Did we? <laughs> like, I feel like we didn't help them. Uh, I heard they were making a Rush Hour 4 and felt sad. Let's remember the good times. What does Efab think of Jackie Chan's filmography and your favorites? I love him in, like, all of the movies he's in. As for favorites, mm. I did. I kind of want to rewatch the Rush Hour trilogy. A lot of people say the third one's bad. I remember enjoying it, but I wouldn't mind finding out if it was like much worse than the others. But uh, the first two, I think, are a lot more edgy and a lot more fun. Uh, but th th those would definitely be up there. Um, as for like maybe focusing more so on his um, his his Hong uh, Hong martial Hong. arts, I guess. Uh, I'm not sure which one I would pick, to be honest with you. I think this is going to be one for looking at chat, basically mentioning his entire filmography and all their favorites. I'm not sure which one <laughs> yeah, probably. I guess you'd be picking based on uh, the coolest action scenes. Meals on Wheels has a uh, Wheels on Meals has like the really great fight scene near the end. This fight with Jet Li is um, legendary. How many times have they both been in a film together? Because it's more than once, right? I have been in more than one film together. Yeah, Police Story is a common pick, right? Rumble in the Bronx, I've seen a few times. Mm. Drunken Master. He's I'm great in Rings the... of Power. That's <laughs> Chet Lee, wasn't it? <laughs> he was. Him not giving a fuck was hilarious. 
unironically fucking hilarious. Uh, I, I'm not too. I'm actually not that familiar with Je- uh, Jackie Chan's filmography. Well, Kung Fu Panda. Was... He was in that. Oh yeah, he's monkey. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, but while you were uh, chatting, I was just looking through the Discord, and someone had said, "Man, if I look that good at 47," and I was like, "Yeah, I know, right?" I don't know you, you say that, but he's pretty generic white male, I would say. I don't know. <laughs> how, wait, how old is Jackie Chan? I really want. I'm not sure. I, I really want. Oh, no, I was talking about uh, Isaac Clark. Yeah. I, I, want, oh, I, right. I want Jim Sterling to say it to uh, Wright's face. Like, I, I want to <laughs> say it look, to look, him. You look I like a generic yeah. white man. It's like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> and Gunnar Wright would just say, well, you don't. I mean, well, I. I, I uh, uh, She's trying to. I don't know if she's pass. She or he or they are uh, passing as a uh, female. I think right now, or trying to, as in. So Gunner probably would say that. Um, Jackson sixty-eight. Uh, I guess that makes sense. He's been doing movies since like the seventies, right? And he better better do everything he needs to do to keep making movies forever. Okay. Yeah. Um. Yeah, people will notice. Just ask Ohio. I'm not sure that's right. Yeah, referencing. shit's gone down. Oh, in Ohio. That chemical thing, that chemical explosion. Yeah. Uh, oh, everyone, I've heard about if, this. Yeah, everyone. Dev released a video, I think, like today about it. Um, go watch Short Fat Otaku. He made a great video on the Ohio chemical situation. So, uh, okay, is what's the is there a gist pen. of it or? A uh, huge chemical, uh, potential chemical spill disaster. Uh, a train went off the rails and they tried to do a controlled, essentially burn of all the chemicals, uh, uh, a lot of it on the train. But because of the weather, it kind of got trapped in the atmosphere when it they wanted it to disperse. And now we could have a serious potential um, uh, chemical disaster on their hands around Ohio and uh, that area. Um, well, yeah, I'll check out his video. Um... Yes. But... Yeah. I would Just... suggest everyone do that just finished a watch through buffy and angel there's a lot of bs but it's etched a place in my heart just wish a particular character got to make it to the finish yeah i think everyone does that's a that's a regrettable one um yeah i agree good stuff though i'm glad you enjoyed it will you guys check out ben shapiro's review of the last of us episode three it's called broke back zombie farm uh no i'll pass i'm all right <laughs> i'm all Sorry. good i'm all good that. Um, be mad at Neil Philosophers 2, not the actors, for fuck's sake. Are people mad at the actors, Philosophers 2? Uh, well, people, I mean, wasn't, didn't, uh, Laura Bailey, like, people were, like, harassing her because she played Abby. I really, like I said, I really hope people that, don't do that. I, I'm pretty when... sure people also harass the, uh, the, like, the model, the, the face model for, uh, Abby as well. It's like, why would you do that? Whoever gets cast as Abby and for what they're doing in season two and stuff. Yeah, I feel, I feel kind of bad for them. I do feel bad for them. If shit for nothing. They are. There's so many fucking people on the internet who I know will just, I mean, after what we've seen, like as good as the show's been so far, and some people are just fucking brain rotted, man, I do feel sorry for them. Well, it's just people like, what, 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 why would you harass like actors and actresses for like playing a role in a. Like remember, re- remember when like they 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 said this was a thing that happened to like Rose Tico and everything that actress and well, like I mean, I'm pretty can't... Sure people did people did like d- like harass her, yeah. So I was like, guys, Shit, don't uh... don't do the thing. It's well, yeah, bad. I mean, no, don't do the thing. I'm assuming it's not controversial. Just be like, yeah, don't do that. You would think it wouldn't be controversial. Yeah, you would think. Mola once said you might revisit Godzilla King of the Monsters. Would you guys be up for a monster vs. arc, except Godzilla vs. Kong? All its problems could fill a whole EFAP episode, which I could contribute to. I feel like this has been answered before, but it might be one of the ones we haven't released yet. But um, the answer is yes, I'd like to do a monster vs. arc, but we would totally involve Godzilla vs. Kong. I'm looking forward to when we eventually cover that. That movie apparently is perfect for EFAP movies. Uh, it's wild. Which movie, sorry? Godzilla vs. Kong. Apparently it's crazy. <laughs> yeah, it probably is. It's probably really dumb. But that'll make for funny memes, won't it? Uh, wrong, Fringy. If information is not communicated through text, it does not exist. Ignore that me responding to what you said destroys my argument. Uh, well, no, it wouldn't, right? If, if it only exists in text, then, uh, then what you said is uh, actually venerates your argument, right? 
I think I get what you mean, but I think you I think you got it backwards. Wait, maybe he <laughs> meant text message. as though um text like literature. Oh, like, like um, him writing stuff down, like that that Sam was writing stuff down on the pad and that was well, how he was communicating. Uh, I legit saw maybe the argument of like mean. um you know, you've taken all of his dialogue away and someone else is like, he still has dialogue. What do you mean? And like they legit were like, it's not the same. And it's like <laughs> he's still communicating. I don't it's not like why why is this so upsetting? I don't understand. I, I, I don't get it. Um By making Sam deaf, they made it so Henry Oh wait, we read that one ahead of time. Uh yes. environmental social governance score. Essentially corporations can get more money loaned to them slash invested in them based on following whole policies, hence why companies can fail and it doesn't matter. That's what ESG stands for. Uh, environmental okay. social governance. Is that like a thing that applies to film and television productions? Well, so part of the issue is, I might skip ahead actually to a question that kind of regards this. Um, so here we are. Honest question. If something is strictly put into a piece of media, no matter how good it is, because of ESG, shouldn't we oppose it at all turns? Because ESG is forcing overt political rhetoric slash messaging into art slash media, regardless if that is what the artist slash director wants. So our take on this has been and will always be this goes back all the way to, um, I want to say, 20s to 30s EFAP, uh, when we were talking about forced diversity, the uh, the concept of you have your story created, and then they say you must make someone <clears throat> in here black when they're not, or gay when they're not, or blah, 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 when they're not. We said back then, and I'll say now, uh, you shouldn't be doing that. We are very against telling artists in any way, shape, or form what they have to do with their story because of uh, sort of meta values and meta reasons. And this goes not just in the form of uh, race swapping or, or whatever have you, but even including, like, I want more explosions in here. Put one there, put one there, put one there. We always use that example with Michael Bay. It's an easy one. Everyone's aware of it. Or if if J.J. Abrams, back in the day anyway, might make different jokes today, but you'd be like, I want more lens flares. they got to go here and here and here. And, and like maybe the uh, cinematography person is like, no, 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 that's going to fuck up the goal of this. And he's like, no, do it. And if you don't have at least five more, I'm going to... You know, not give you the funny or whatever. I, I don't like that with anything. I let, let the artist do what they want. However, that obviously means that I'm still going to judge the artist for the choices they make. We are big in favor of keeping everything coherent. But the coherence comes from what the artist is telling us is true in many forms. So, like, it's not me imposing rules on them. It's me asking them to remain consistent to the rules that they've established themselves. So that's kind of where we go with that. So, no, I, I don't like it if, uh, if they say you should have, uh, you know... Uh, Sam be deaf because that's better for that will give you more points and more funding for social whatever however and we said this was forced diversity it doesn't guarantee the thing itself will be bad we are against the practice of telling artists what to do but if they make the art and it's actually really solid well that that that, that will judge that for what it is we're happy to talk about the um the meta of all of this stuff but I, th I think the way to put it is uh, a lot of the time we don't know the truth behind all of this, but take a movie that's, um, uh, take Top Gun Maverick, for example. Big, uh, big thumbs up to that movie. I haven't actually seen it, but as far as I'm aware, uh, for you, you said really there's, like a, there's a female pilot in that, right? Uh, pilot S. Yeah. So, no reason to assume this, but if we found out through a leaked conversation that Tom Cruise had an executive shouting um, down in, in a meeting saying, you have to have a fucking woman pilot so that we can get more funding for blah, blah, blah. I'd be like, wow, that's a really bad practice. It doesn't make the movie bad, though. Like, the, you know, they managed to implement it well. Well, because remember, like, films, store, like, games, television shows are made under all manner of economic restrictions, restrictions based on, like, the preferences of executives or whatever the landscape is looking like, market research and focus group testing and stuff like that. And, like, something can be subjects to all of those things that you know we'd look at and be like well that's lame if it feels like the creative freedom is being restricted if they create something good what's like well that's good right they're like two independent conversations like the process by which it was made and the actual outcome in much the same way as you could look at like a film where like the production was a nightmare everybody was miserable while making it there was a lot of like mismanagement on set or like video games that are made under crunch we'd be like crunch was bad the game was good they're like two different conversations mm -hmm, yeah that yeah, would be the, like an example. So practice, you could look at, you know, practice versus yeah. the the art itself, and um, because like a lot of people talk about the production of um, like, where am I? Where am I? My that what, what's that film? The one that's like famously horrible, and it had like one of the uh, the one ever. with the lions, right? The uh, yeah, I think so. The, yeah. You can directly compare that with um, um, like Apocalypse Now, 
uh, as like they both have these horrifying productions, but one created this incredible, long-lasting film. The other one created a film that people love to cover for funnies, like because it's so bad. Wait, which movie? I didn't hear it when Fringy said it. Said it. Oh, I forget the. I don't Dr. know what it's called. The Island of called. something, I, right? I, I Doctor Moreau. That's the one. The Island of Doctor Moreau. Yeah, that's what I was thinking of. Sorry. Oh, you, the the one with the lion. I I thought he had lions in raw. that film as well. But if they're talking, if you're talking about raw, that's. that's I think there was a movie called Raw. That was the one with the lions that had real lions, where like people got maimed and stuff on yeah, the set. Yeah, I think again, the main really, actress got her arm broken by an elephant. Really bad production leg. and ethics and all that sort of thing. But it it could end up making a good movie, or it could end up making a bad one. You know? Yeah, um, I've I've heard that that movie is legitimately raw, terrifying to watch. If you were comparing it, right, because you'd be thinking the whole time, like, holy shit, those actors are trapped. Like, those are like lions and lionesses. Yeah. And I guess if you were to look more, uh, I guess more like, like, you know, Kubrick, like making them do like 40, 50 takes of the, mm. you know, like, yeah, that's shining. Like, that would be an example of you, like, making it a real, a real, like, negative experience for the actors and actresses. And you well, could, like, um... you could happily say that was really oh, negative. Wizard of Oz. Like, Oh, the, right. Probably uh, the most iconic movie of all movies, Wizard of Oz. The I uh, like the what they had to go through in terms of like people were on drugs. The 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 studio lighting was like vaporizing people. Jesus. It was super hot on set, and there there's a whole bunch of shit that went into making that movie. And it's the most iconic and well known movie probably of all time. Oh, and here's maybe a so. more controversial one: uh, Viggo Mortensen breaking his toe when he kicks that helmet. It's like that's bad. That oh, that right, happened. Yeah. But. Yeah. Made for a really good, good recording, it's, good, good thing. It's similar but different, yeah. It's like, well, um, what what practice could be taken to prevent that from happening? It's like, well, I guess he should have been more careful, and there should have been more thought about. You're going to be kicking something that's, unless he just, did that uh, off script, in which case it's just more his fault. But I think it's just more of a. That's just like that strikes me as like a freak accident, where like kicking a I helmet think that was a, just uh, kind of. I think that was he chose to do that. I think. I'd have to check. Well, even if he watch. was, there was no expectation. There was no reasonable expectation that he'd break a toe from doing that. It's just a freak accident. Whereas other examples would be like they were made to do super long hours. And yeah, no, that's, that's why I meant like on a yeah. scaling it all the way back. Like I guess a better example maybe would be Lutz throwing a real knife, right? Yeah, like reasonable sorts of just like something went wrong, shit, you know? but. Oh, look, well, look like uh, Leonardo, Leonardo uh, DiCaprio smashing that glass and cutting his hand up. Was that improvised? No, was he supposed to smash it? Well, no, no, he got hurt. He wasn't meant to smash it. He, right. Uh, yeah. So it, one, the reason I'm asking that is because I just want to clarify. Oh, what in, it in, in Django Unchained, um, Leonardo DiCaprio smashes. His oh, hand yeah, that's right. Yeah. 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 And, yeah, they, and that, like wrap it and cut. And so, um, yeah, we just there's a line between how the thing is made, what decisions are made behind the scenes to make certain things happen, and then what the thing is itself, right? Like Civil War wasn't supposed to have Iron Man in it. Um. But then they forced him in, and I just think that the story is fantastic oh, well, yeah, right. as a result of comparing Iron Man with Cap. And conversely, Venom in Spider-Man Three, which <laughs> didn't have such. Great yeah, results. they forced they forced Raimi to use Venom, and it had really bad results. Um, we can mm -hmm. talk about that, but we can also talk about the art. We can talk about them separately. We can talk about the reasons. Like, I just want to make sure um, when you find out a thing has something in it for reasons you consider to be unethical or uh, you know whatever thing you have against them. That doesn't automatically make the thing itself uh, bad. We try to go for the... Like, I keep saying in-universe, for lack of better terms. Just to... So hopefully that explains our take on whatever the, the ESG stuff is. I I don't like forcing artists to do things against the, the values that they're trying to put into their story. It's annoying. Um... You may be coming to the Discord later and talk about episode five with some of us folks who aren't the crazies. Well, I mean, I, hopefully this this has sort of settled a lot of it. Um, I hope so. Keep an eye out um, for different arguments and stuff. Yeah, if, if yeah, I just a lot of what we see is is really bad arguments, and a lot of what we see is just declarations that it's bad or that it's worse than the games or it's da 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 da, and there's no like attempt to. Of substance, there's no element of substance to it. Um, and, yeah, and, and as I said, I think there's an air of a, a reasonable distrust of the people behind it and the companies making it, and and uh, and then there's a lot of stuff to do with like uh, agenda-driven content, and I I feel like it might be clouding viewpoints. Meanwhile, like a lot of the motivation mining that's been done for, from people on our end is kind of confused because people don't really know why we're biased in favor, quote unquote. 
Like, yeah, there's not really a reason for us to be biased in favor of it, is there? Yeah. And so maybe it's because we think it's actually really good. We're not, like, lying. We, we think this is good. We're trying our best to explain why. Not to say anyone else is lying, um, but I just don't see any uh, reasonable bias for this one with us. If anything, I was biased against the show. I tried to explain that, I think, in episode four. Well, before the show came out, I think we were almost unanimously saying, ah, it's probably going to suck, but we'll see when it comes out because, you know, so much stuff had been bad. But, you know, we will keep an open mind as we do. And sure enough, uh, it was good. Bring an idea for your cartoon making thing. Watch some strong bad emails. A lot. Little. Oh, I've seen strong bad emails. Yeah, that's uh. Oh, that's, that's taking uh, it way I'm, back. Uh, uh, yeah, we're, we're talking early. Yeah, so, uh, that's let like me yeah. The, uh, let me you finish the message. A uh, long, a lot little episodes with some good writing. Things get better after fifty. I uh, yeah, the Homestar Runner was really that man. That is going back. That's like twenty years old. <laughs> yeah, that's going back that's... to like legendary Lilypad and Doctor Tran and stuff like that. Homestar Runner, yeah, because Strong Bad Email is essentially, even though Homestar Runner was like the the guy, it was like um, Strong Bad essentially became like the main character. Um, I like Strong Bad Emails as a format. I, I I find something interesting in terms of like you know, animations on the internet of, like, figuring out the types of formats that uh, are, like, manageable on, like, a recurring basis. Um, and it feels like Strong Bad Emails was a good example of, like, a... Um, it's still an animation. It's still got, like, the full-fledged animation. It still looks like it, but it's got presentation choices that make it easier to make. Like, it just makes it faster to make, you know, than if you were just making a full-blown animation where he's not sitting at the computer, you know, typing up a message. Um... Yeah, strong bad emails were really funny. <laughs> uh, Did you ever watch uh, Homestar Runner, Mola? It sounds like you didn't. I'm uh, I'm recognizing some of these references, but I've never watched it now. Strong, uh, I can't do the voice. It's been a little while. Do you, oh damn, maybe maybe you need like a picture. Hold on, <laughs> of Homestar Runner. That might help. Strong this bad was is familiar to me as well. I think maybe my friends yeah. have seen it, but I don't think I ever did. Uh, yeah, that was uh that's that is some old internet uh <laughs> old internet um man, those were the days. <laughs> that was uh th those were the days. Do you remember the, the Simpsons episode where Bart makes uh like a like a web animation? The the angry dad? Remember that? Yeah. <laughs> oh I, I I it's just reminiscent of that time. Oh, right, okay. And, and I remember they had the jokes as well where, like, Bart just, they just kept giving him stock. They had, like, a toilet paper roll, but it was stock, and he just kept getting it. Because <laughs> that would have been made shortly after the dot-com bubble, um, where it's just like, you know, like, here, have some stock, just give, me, give him some stock, and he's just <laughs> wheeling it out. That's what I mean, when I was a kid, I never understood that joke. I was like, stock, what, like, I don't understand. Um... That oh and that, what was what was one of the the jokes? It was like you know oh what a day maybe the news will cheer me up and then it just says like angry dad sucks. He's like that's opinion not news. <laughs> and his head explodes. I uh, I recognize Trogdor the Burninator as well. Oh okay yeah so then you would have uh yeah and then you would have seen Homestar. No I haven't seen it. Yeah but I recognize that. Are you sure that you never saw like even one? Because uh, I never. I, I I've only seen like a couple, and that like oh, I say, yeah. that's going way back because like the 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 flat early flash animations, mm -hmm. um, you know all, all that stuff. That's that's just, I mean, some of the people listening to this just have no clue. It, well, I mean, some of the people who are listening to this probably were, were born like after after this was uh, after this yeah. came out. Yeah, we would. Oh man, those playing hot seat Civ Four with my buddy Henry. Oh fuck yeah. And, Frogdor's referencing oh, Buffy, that's be, why I know that. Yeah, I've been listening, you know, listening okay. to these, you know, just, you know, these flash animations people would do back in the day. God, I remember playing. one of the ones from the early oh. 2000s was uh, Stick Death. That was, uh, that was another one of the, um, like, those flash animations. Super edgy. Yeah, some of them were pretty, pretty edgy. Well, because this would, uh, Homestar Runner would have pre- Newgrounds started in the late nineties, right? Newgrounds was started in the late nineties, or was probably it, you know, it was one of those like e bombs world kind of sites that just sort of had everything. It had crazy uh, videos, flash games, pictures. And as far as I know, Newgrounds still it's still Newgrounds carrying on. Yeah, 
Newgrounds is still around. It's just that Newgrounds felt like more of a mid two thousands was when it was like hyper popular. Like that's when a lot of a lot of what I remember about Newgrounds, oh, like yeah. Edge World and Oni NG and um and uh, Johnny Utah, like that was like the mid two thousands, I think. Whereas Homestar was a little bit earlier than that. Yeah, um, I'm on Newgrounds well, now, and I'm just like, wow, like, blast started. from the past. Yeah, I mean, people like the they Newgrounds still has like a uh, it still has like a dedicated user base, which is really cool. It's just like there's a yeah. uh, movies, like a, games, uh, art, passionate. audio. It's just yeah. got a vibe. Newgrounds, there's a vibe to Newgrounds. It it's kind of like stepping through a time portal. Yeah. Um. But, 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 but my minor gripe is it seems like Henry and Sam were on the run for just those 10 days in one spot rather than surviving on their own for however long. So in the game, Henry and Sam are a part of a group of people that were attacked and ambushed and then they escaped and I guess uh, running around the that area for however long, yeah. Meanwhile in the show, they're in that, they hold up in that place 10 days. I mean, I, I don't think it takes away from, you know, Henry and Sam in the game versus the show, they are different. But I don't think I would consider it different in any kind of way that takes away from their story. Um, I know, I've seen the sentiment that turning Henry and Sam into rats is like, it sucks. Like how, you know, fuck you for, for making them like lesser as a result. And it's just like, I think that once you know the reason for it, I don't, I mean, Joel it's, says it's this in the hard. show. He's like, I shouldn't have judged you so harshly for doing what you've done for your kid or your brother. Oh, I mean, it's a spe so. Of course, this is something that we we talked about briefly in the coverage. We're building up with a lot of the stories that Joel and Ellie like learn about, or you know, the people they stumble across and, and encounter. A lot of it is just like building up, uh, essentially, a lot of fundamental choices that these characters are going to be making, particularly towards the end of the season. And of course, there, right? It was Henry made a choice to essentially condemn a great man uh, because he he needed to save his brother. That was a choice that he was willing to make, and he made it. Um, and then it was highlighted by Kathleen later. It's like, what, just for that one kid, you're going to make that choice. Like, you're going to, you know, condemn other people. Um, but it's, it's, a, it's a choice that Joel's going to make at the end of the season, um, is that Ellie is more important than, uh, than, like, anything else to him. Like, to the point that he's willing to fight the Fireflies to save uh, her. Now, of course, it's going to be relevant to see how the Fireflies are contextualized. Like, are they going to be made more or less redeemable? Is there going to be more uh, logic informing those choices? You know, um, it, it's like that's that's what they're doing, um, and that's what that's what Henry and, and Sam like as a story. That's just helping uh, reinforce that theme. Because of course, we saw it again with like Bill and Frank, right? That their story is kind of about like the choices that people will make in the apocalypse of like what they choose to value, how they're going to participate in the world. Um, you yeah, know, and, things um, like that. You understand the more that they tweak and redo something like The Last of Us Two, they could make it better. If, for example, you don't have the ham-fisted and bullshit zebra scene, and instead you actually have just a dad <laughs> with his daughter living life as survivors, who are actually pretty good-willed, but then from their POV, they're like, this girl could save the whole world. And then, uh, you know, he has an argument with his people about whether or not it's it's viable or ethical. Then they have that argument with Joel, and, it, and, and you know, it goes over, and then Ellie, imagine Ellie's the one that says, I want to do it. I, I, I want to do it. Oh, There's no yeah. reason you can't make the story go that way. And then, but like, you have to be careful because we're going to be fucking staring at every last piece of cause and effect. It's like episode nine is going to be the one that we're looking at. And uh, uh, making it so that Joel kills someone as a part of a group of people who are doing something he fucking like, you know, hates or, or disagrees with. Of course, they're going to have people who love them. And of course, those very people could then try and get revenge on Joel. These are not story ideas that can't go anywhere. Like, yeah, just don't have Abby beat him to death with a golf club saying you don't get to rush this. When she has no idea then, what the context is and you and then, Joel when, being uh, an idiot. And then yeah. when, when Ellie comes, finds her and kills her friends, not have her say we let you live and you wasted it. Don't, don't do things like that. And then you might be okay. Yeah, and don't make <laughs> Joel just like do everything right and then be really like low guard for no um, reason at all and then get himself killed. Yeah. Well, hey, Tommy's kind of on the hook for that because he's the one who said, I'm Tommy and we live down the hill. It's like, that was pretty dumb. Yeah, <laughs> Tommy, you know better than that. You know better than that, Tommy. Well, and that's why I appreciate what they've been doing in the show. Uh, both times Ellie has given away any small piece of information, Joel has given her a glare. Uh, first yeah. time was yeah. in name, and then it was when she said they're going to Wyoming. He looks at her, and then she says, "What state's big enough for two more people?" It's like it's not about that. It's giving away information. 
so yeah, you know, uh, they're going to have to reformat a little bit, um, and everyone will be worried about that last episode. We'll just have to see what they do. We will have to see. But we can have Ellie chew out Joel and not to, he not defend himself, right? It's like, yeah, that'd be another huge mistake. I hope, because uh, uh, this is the thing, I would consider it a great downgrade if they have Joel understand like the situation is reasonable, and then he just does it anyway and kills everybody. Because in the game, it's not that way, and you don't damage the character by doing that. But if they change it so that Ellie agrees and all the doctors are on board and it's actually really chill and they're all friendly, and then he just fucking shoots them all, that would be awful. So we'll have to see. Uh, damn it, these, both next ones are for Fringy. Wow. Um, so wait. Uh, after seeing how different, in a good way, this adaptation has been so far, I'm curious to see if they can fix The Last of Us 2 with Season 2. Gonna have to see. Um, but it, it, that's a lot to fix. Mahler, I, I think you, you cut out for me a bunch during that. Reread it just in case. Oh, well, it's, uh, it'll be recorded anyway. I'm doing a little well, I, recording, but... I'd like to hear it, though. All right. After seeing how different, in a good way, this adaptation has been so far, I'm curious to see if they can fix The Last of Us 2 with Season 2. I was saying that it's going to take uh, a lot of tweaking. That's a... Yeah. Um, I think they've got it in them, based on what I've seen, but I'm really curious. Uh, bro, you know I love the show. I watched it grow from the back row, sipping Bordeaux. I bestow my chateau on the Froyo Rodo Plateau below, also high rago. Yo! All right. I <laughs> uh, hope you masters have a great week. What's each of y'all's favorite anime? Uh, FMA Brotherhood, probably. Or One Punch Man. Uh, probably that, or... I really like... I mean, probably that or Cowboy Bebop. I mean, I I, I like uh, the older ones. I've, I haven't watched any modern anime like at all, really. But yeah, hmm. probably probably one of those older ones that you know the oldie goldies. I really like uh, Ghost in the Shell a lot. Um, I've got uh, yeah, that's, there you go. There's some of those. Um, from now on, I'm no longer a cyst. I'm quoting Iron Man. <laughs> I <laughs> yeah, I'm no Hello. longer racist. I'm just quoting Iron Man. <laughs> That's a good way to yeah. You'll be right. Uh, what director would you pick for Gargoyles remake? Gargoyles remake. Um. Huh. I faintly remember the um the the TV show. What director? I guess it depends on what kind of tone I want it to have, and we're gonna assume this this that this director does a good job. Maybe, I don't know. I feel like you could go a lot of directions with it. You could go like, like Tim Burton would probably make a really neat gargoyle show. Hmm. I think that's just an element of macabre enough. You could give, he'd probably give the city a whole bunch of character. Uh, the gargoyles would have a lot of personality to them. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to go with that. I feel like there's a lot of, Someone said Tarantino gargoyles say the N word. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I'll, I'll go with uh, Tim Burton. But I bet there's a there's plenty of really cool answers for this one. Gargoyles are a fan of Iron Man. I see. Speaking of your argument is Cope. Ask Fringy why he's a bird. Very true. And the follow up super chat says Fringy, why are you a bird? Right, because his parents were birds, right? I guess so. But is he there? Or... That would make sense. Ringy? He's unmuted. Yeah, I don't know. I guess he's thinking. It's a tough question. It's pretty. That's a pretty deep existential question. So. All right. Well, the yeah. second he makes any noises, I'll I'll reask it. I'll reask it. Yeah. Uh, I've only seen Game of Thrones Season 8 because you covered it, Mola, and because my family were also watching it at the time. I guess that's hate-watching. I guess. You know what I mean? Like, so specific and strange. Uh, Isaac OG look versus his new. He looks younger now, I find. Well, so I think he looks kind of younger because they've taken the gray bits out of his hair. Um, which I think uh, we, we talked about probably should be in there. At least, uh, hopefully we'll see that in Dead Space 2 after this event, you know? It's probably going to put some gray in your hair. Um, 
still you can still hear me, right, everyone? Yeah, I can hear you. Just making sure. Yeah. Uh, I think Kathleen struggles to shoot the doctor because they have a history. Only hatred between her and Henry. Plus, she's already shown to be vengeful. Um. Yeah, but like we said, so she's going to be executing him when he's like begging for her not to, and she wants to explain why she's definitely doing it. It's it's that's a perfectly normal human thing. She's not going to do it like a robot. In fact, the whole situation yeah, is the... very emotional. Yeah, there's probably a um, a decent amount of hesitation. You know, it's it's like finally looking over the edge of a cliff, um, or when you're at the you know in the roller coaster about to start your descent. That that you're like, oh shit, we're finally here. It's finally yeah. happening. Uh, many people are mad they made Sam deaf because retconning a trait reminds the audience that he reminds the audience he isn't real. Sorry, what? Say that one more time. I uh, maybe so people I understood that correctly. Are mad. Sorry, it's not. It's not many. It was maybe people are mad they made Sam deaf because retconning a trait reminds the audience that he isn't real. Um, the problem that I hear people saying about that are just tards talking about like, dude, the deaf agenda or something like that. That seems to be the only place I hear that referenced as being an issue. I think it's just people brain rotted in the culture war stuff. I'm just a little bit confused what they mean by uh, the audience don't think he's real. Like if you could, like if you can take a character and just change their traits, it's a reminder that that character is a fictional character that can just be changed pretty much arbitrarily. Well, surely we could say that um, about everything, right? The transfer over, they change all kinds of things in smaller, medium, and large ways. Um, but like the immersion factor is really dependent on the individual. Uh, I respect the fact that a lot of people can get thrown out by adaptation changes, but at the same time, there are people out there who don't get thrown out by adaptation changes, so I don't know what we're supposed to do in conclusion. Bring are you there? Back. Yeah. They wanted to, the, the, the people of the world wanted to ask, why are you a bird? What, why am I a bird? What kind of question is that? Uh, you know, just one of those, uh, just, you know, one of those questions. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, so what do you think? Right, next question. I'm not. I'm, no. <laughs> I'm glad we answered for him, Mahler. <laughs> they said you'd cope. Uh, ridiculous. Nonsense. Mm. Hate it. Uh, hey, EFAP. Hi, Rags. Hello. Quick update on my EFAP catch-up. Currently at 123. The Wonder Woman 84 and Mando Ooh. Season 2 arcs were quite enjoyable. See you in a year, maybe. Wow. <laughs> See you wow, then. that long ago. Jeez. That's the thing. It would be kind of interesting to get a list of all the stories we have broken down and talked about. It would be insane at this point, isn't it? Massive list. Jeez. Yeah, you're probably right. You guys are the best. Thank you for helping me get through uni and for all the hard work you do. I've always wanted to say this. Hi, Rags. How are you? Oh, hello. I'm doing A-OK. -okay. I'm doing all right. Glad to Had hear a good it. day so far, yeah. Uh, you guys ever watch Heathers? No. No, I have not. Uh, clarifying on my super chat, it made this sneaking in awkward to me, as they would have no reason to have needed to do so before. Also, that was probably the first interaction with Sam seeing infected. Sneaking in? Uh, with, with Joel and Ellie? So, um, the, the reason you sneak in and you have them at gunpoint before anything happens is because all he knows about Joel is he's a man that's willing to fucking kill people, especially in this world. Yeah. So, you put a gun you on them and you explain, virtue. look, I could kill you, but I'm not going to. Okay. Yeah, you establish that you have control over that situation, or at least you're projecting strength. Um, it makes it less likely that they'll try to get one up on you. And as Mahler said, it is an incredible gesture of goodwill that you're, you have them and you could do anything you want with them, but you're choosing to essentially equalize the playing field voluntarily with them. And the uh, key it's, piece of information he gives is, I'm the most wanted man in this city, and I'm pretty sure you guys are number two sort of thing. Yeah, like we're we're kind of, yeah we're we're stuck in this situation together, and we don't actually want to like get one up over you, because um, if I'm you know Joel or Ellie, people hold me up, you know they, they they get a drop on me while I'm sleeping, and can take anything they want or kill me or anything, and they decide no, actually we'll just be chill. I'll be like oh wow that I get yeah if this person did want to like kill me or take my stuff, they just would have done it. So I guess they want something else, or they really do want to cooperate. And it would does, be hard for me to rationally justify anything he else. Just kind of break apart in it, and he's like, I, "I'm not sure how to do this. Like, I I don't know what happens next, sort of thing." Because yeah, he's still, uh, 
is all new to him. Uh, but they clarified, they said, that was in regards to them just being on the run for 10 days, hiding in a hole rather than surviving. I'm trying to sort of understand what the question is saying. Oh, I think they're talking about the other thing they said, which was about the difference between Show Sam and Game Sam. Show Sam and, and Henry, sorry, are, are hiding in that room while game versions are moving around the city, you know, being careful, eating what they can, doing what they can. I um Yeah, I guess they're just taking a little bit of a different direction here. Yeah, I, I don't... Um, fine with me. I really like what they did. I the, think what they decided to do was really well executed. The Henry and Sam of the game world have moved through the country and done survival stuff, while the show ones have been in uh, Fedra-controlled Kansas City for the majority of... Well, for the whole life for Sam, but for Henry, the majority of his life. And then um, they break out of it. They hide... Like, the Henry in the show is not as equipped at all for um for basic survival stuff, which helps play into how he, he wants Joel. Joel is his, like... His way into, I think he says like, I know where to go. I know the city like the back of my hand, but you know how to like survive. Um, this is a non sequitur. They're making a How to Train Your Dragon live action adaptation. Oh, that's gonna go over well. Oh, that's gonna be that'll. Hey, add it to the list. Yeah, Universal. It's coming out in like two years. Um. Okay. Do we have, so, like, a director uh, or anything for uh, it? The, well, it's the director of the animated films is doing it. <clears throat> that could be good or bad. I mean, it could be anything, really, right? But, like, why would you do this? Why would you? It's like, I know you don't have to make things because people, only because people want them. Oh, but, like, I think they're just man. doing it because Disney does it and makes them a lot of money. I think mean, that's uh, it. Disney yeah. does a lot of these live-action adaptations. They make a lot of money. <laughs> um, well, versus... yeah, sorry to ruin your days, everybody. <laughs> versus matchup syndrome versus MCU Mysterio. It's going to be MCU Mysterio. Uh, more well, probably, likely, because yeah. he's, he's going to be Brian's invisible everywhere. and then he's going to fuck with the perception of everything to syndrome and then he'll shoot him with a drone in the back of the neck, sort of thing. Um, though, yeah, of course, syndrome, this is a situation as far as we where know, if syndrome gets the upper hand to start with, then yeah, you could kill him with his time freeze, zero energy thing, but uh. My guess is Mysterio wins more than Syndrome does. Yeah, Syndrome doesn't seem to have any extrasensory powers or abilities, and that's going to be a... It's going to probably be your number one... Like, I, don't, I wouldn't expect someone who is who can see, like, psychically, um, or who doesn't rely on, like, their sight or, you know, typical ways that our vision is used to... Um, you know, that, that's already an incredible roadblock for Mysterio to try and overcome. Why must they pill for the old? They don't know how to do anything else. I'm not racist. I'm quoting Pulp Fiction Tarantino. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Very true. Bringu is Daredevil woke because blind agenda? Uh. Maybe. Definitely. There's no reason for <laughs> the, him to be The blind, blind agenda sounds really funny, right? Like, <laughs> blind <laughs> agenda. You don't even know where they go. It's like an agenda that doesn't even know it at once. Yeah, the blind agenda. Uh, the reason why he has a bold action is so the writers don't have to factor him in slapping 30 rounds of lead down range every time they get into it. Uh, but I, I think it's just more of a game thing, isn't it? Doesn't he have a bolt action rifle in the game? Yeah, and I, I think mean, it's just more we of just had a scene with to shit tons of them in the big group were all firing semi-automatic weapons, right? Um... And and they could just, they, they could have given him an M16 or an AK or something and just said, oh, I've only got like eight rounds. Yeah, I don't think it's quite that. I think you're right. It's probably more so to do with adapting. Something that um, someone noticed and I didn't was the Joel is uh, he does this in the game as well. He moves forward with in the show and the game with uh, Henry's backpack after all this happens. I thought it was neat that the captain. Right. Uh, I know it's a bit niche, but I'm excited about uh, Cable Space Program Two, which goes early access this month. Do you guys have thoughts on it too? Um, I've not played it, so I couldn't tell you really. Yeah, I'm not too um, I'm not too into Kill Space program, but I know a lot of people who are. So, hope it's good. Yeah, I hope it's good. Rags on the topic of firearms. What's your take on the U.S. Army's new Sig Sauer Soa XM7 rifle? Uh, I think it's interesting. I don't think it's uh, necessarily a bad idea. I think it'll probably get rolled out, and it will have a uh, valued place in you know amongst the infantry. I don't think it will. I don't think it'll overall replace everything. 
Uh, but I think that uh, they made a good choice to certainly consider having that as a more widespread option in their arsenal. I think it'll fulfill certain roles well, and it seems to be a very capable firearm. Um, I wouldn't want to carry one around, but then again, I wouldn't want to carry around all sorts of things. Uh, so yeah, I think it'll do a lot of good, and I think it's probably good that they uh, decided to sort of uh, make some adoptions. Um, have you guys watched or considered watching Werewolf by Night, special by Marvel, also High Mola? Hello. Uh, I'd like to, actually. Uh, uh, have not. I haven't uh, seen it, so... Apparently it's an hour long, and it's better than most things in Phase 4. That's what's good. Oh, wow. That good, huh? It's about werewolves. They're cool. <clears throat> yeah, werewolves are cool. That was in regards... Uh, oh, wait, we read that one. Uh, listening to you guys cover The Last of Us, and then as, has been interesting, like night and day. Hey, that's neat, though, right? Different perspectives and all that. Um, you know... Take from it what you will. I, uh, I, I have spoken to him. I, you know, I, I think we're in a great place for this show, and I'm downright impressed compared to what I was expecting. And I think it's neat as well that this is going to pave the way for actually adapting faithfully, at the very least, heavily in spirit. Um, but also, like, I mean, the the amount of one to one adaptation stuff that's going on is kind of crazy, in a good way. So hopefully, you know, it encourages more of that in future. Mullet, fuck, marry, kill, rags, fringy, and metal. You must choose. No, I don't. You must choose. The, I refuse. The superset said. The superset chap said you had to answer. I marry them all. Haha. <laughs> I broke your your lame rules. I'm punk. I'm a maverick. Whoa! I'm a, wow. He's subverting expectations. I just subverted the expectation. That is true. Pretty incredible. Pretty incredible. Uh, finished the RE8 fap. Gonna catch up. ISTG. Don't get the hate for rags. Uh, think they were new slash biased people. Dude, do you remember that arc where everyone was like, rags hasn't even played Resident Evil 8? Wasn't that, that was fucking, fucking bizarre? Insane. Yeah. That wasn't, that was so The amount weird. of shit you said off the cuff, uh, like it, uh, how, uh, the, the, the amount of information you had about the game, it wouldn't have mattered if you had played it. Like all the shit it's, you were saying yeah, was from the game. <laughs> I, I think just a lot of people it, just huffing that copium, man. It's like, oh, he, he, he hasn't even played it. I was like, oh, well, I did. Weird. I did play it. I played it all the way fucking through. It wasn't fun. <laughs> I even did, I even started a I even started a new game plus to try and test some things, and that shit breaks fast. Mm -hmm. That game just demands that you stay on its rails for it to work. By the way, um. Chisa blogs. I'm a delivery rider in Singapore and work eight to nine hours a day. You keep me entertained through rain and shine. Oh, that's great oh, to hear. Very and glad then. Hope, hope it yeah. does in future. Um, because yeah, there's if you especially if you start from the beginning of our backlog, that's um, I don't even I have to check efap.me how we're doing for the overall time. But uh, it takes a while to get through the whole thing. An individual podcast can, I mean, our longest record I think was just we, we hit the cap several times. Still waiting for him to extend that, especially for anniversaries, but what are you gonna do? Uh, do you think there's some level of contrivance with the infected coming out of the hole right when the heroes are in the crosshairs of Evil Lady? So that one's interesting. Um, if we roll over to the writing room, so to speak, uh, and we're like, the car is gonna go in, and it's going to explode, which it does, and that is gonna weaken the ground and alert the zombies. Okay. How long before the zombies get there? Uh, or flickers, whatever. Like, well... Really, that's kind of up to the writer at that point. I was actually going to uh, yeah. use, I don't know what to call these, but there are things that on it's it, the cause and effect offers options, and it's really up to the writer. For example, um, Schrodinger's fuse. Kind of, yeah. Like, there's, there's lots of, um, there's lots of directions the thing can go. Like, how many bullets are, uh, are on backup for a lot of these characters? Like, is it, is it one uh, magazine? Is it two? Is it three? Well, it's really up to you as the writer at that point. Uh, because yeah, you because it say, makes sense that they all have, you know, they, they could all be carrying around 150 rounds. And it's like, yeah, well, you know, it's a seems like a pretty large organized group of people. And these are all their military dudes. And so, yeah, they're probably got a decent amount of ammunition with them. Um, yeah, yeah, it seems to fit. And so it's like, so how long do those zombies take to get there? And I think as a writer, you'll be like, um, should we have them come out? Once we give a little bit of room for the characters to have a bit of their moment. So we'll have Kathleen explain uh, her motivation to Henry, which is what she wants to do. He's going to decide quite heroically to go out there and give himself up in the hopes that the children can get away. And it's like, yeah, and then we can have the zombies come up. There's no reason not to. 
Uh, there's nothing in, in, in cause and effect that would stop you from doing that. Um, and you could be like, well, it's still convenient, right? If it had taken just a second longer. And it's like, um, well, it could have been a lot faster. It could have been a lot longer. I, I, the thing is, the cause and effect says that it could have been any of them. It's, it's completely open to the writer. So the, we've talked about these before. Like I said, I don't have a name for them. But they're just things that it's really the writer's choice. Nothing in the universe says it has to be uh, one particular way. Unless we had more information, like where the zombies are specifically in the ground underneath. Yeah. As soon as you show us that, oh, now you have a limit. But they didn't, so... I can't say it contradicts yeah, it, anything. Yeah, it would be good to come up with a, with a name for it. Could be really useful. Because I like that ammo counter one, right? Because it's like, uh, you know, can you gun down five of these these uh, clickers? And he goes, I've only got the one magazine, so maybe. Or he could say, I've got plenty of ammo, definitely. Or uh, I'm nearly out, actually, because I fired it all recently. Also. You know, it's like, which do yeah. you go with? Um, yeah, and even then, there's so much wiggle room. Nearly out, I get, I get 15 rounds, 10, 5. Yeah. You know, it just even then, you know, you give yourself a decent amount of room to just, you know, just sort of choose and see um shout out for the hero we lost thick thick 44 human man warrior he was thick they they were nobody what um i so that seems in i i'm wondering if they're talking about you, you guys are aware of the channel neebs gaming have you heard of them battlefield friends do you remember yeah i know altering? i know of him yeah, so thick. I think his uh, name was Tony. Um, he passed away uh, recently, a couple of days ago. Um, okay. Yeah, so pretty sad. Uh, I yeah, think I'm, I think it was. Uh, it bad. was. Uh, I can't. I can't remember exactly what. Uh, what it, I, I think it was related to, like a brain tumor. I think was what he was getting treated for. Um, like ongoing, and yeah, he recently passed away. Oh, sucks. I'm not sure if that's what the no. super chat was referring to, but yeah, um, yeah, it is really sad. I think he was only, I think he was in his 40s um, or maybe early 50s. Family man as well. Yeah, uh, I watched a ton of Battlefield Friends uh, back in the day. Didn't watch as much Neebs Gaming, but those guys made some cool stuff. Um, so yeah. Um, not sure if it's been covered, but you need to get Az off the brain rot. He said that The Last of Us Episode 5 was woke because Henry slash Sam played the race card and more BS. I don't think race is mentioned at all um, in the episode. I don't so think I, it's mentioned at all, yeah. I have to I, hear I, um, I, the argument. I don't know what the argument is. What? Do, what do, you, do you think, oh, you know how hard it is to be a black man in the apocalypse? I was like, I don't know, probably about as Yeah, that's the kind of shit I would I complain about. I'd be like, what the fuck? That'd be like in a Batwoman <laughs> show. That's yeah, what they'd say Batwoman. in Batwoman. Like, it's bad enough, it's the apocalypse. But I have to be a black man. <laughs> like, what? Um, and obviously they're black in, in the game, so I, uh, it's not like a race change or anything. I, I, don't, I don't know what his argument is for that one. Um, I'd have to hear it first. I don't know. In any case, we're caught up. And, um, oh, wow. Oh, we're, at, we're at two hours. I think that's, that's solid enough for a new fat mini. You know, you, got, you guys yeah. never want these to go over two hours. I know that. You guys always hate it when we go long, so... Uh, We'll keep it nice Me? and nice and clean. No, I meant uh, chat. They, they don't like it oh, when okay. we stream for longer. They're all going to oh, say in oh, chat right okay. now, like, thank you guys so much for that's stopping I, now. That's what I hear them regularly say. Yes. Um, thank goodness they didn't go along. What you can expect next is us to break down Ant-Man and the Quantum Mania and the Wasp. And the others. All those wonderful characters in there. Marking the beginning of Phase 5. The excitement is obviously through the roof. The following week, um, will Atomic Heart be out by the following EFAM? I don't know. I do not We've know. Also, we're going to be trying to record a meme fab soon. We're trying to set that in, so we'll have that coming up. And then, yeah, uh, Last of Us will continue. I've been editing all of them solo, so um, EFAP episodes are uh, getting a little shorter for now until we can... Uh, sort things out. It's just like there's this scheduling all over the place and just be trying to fit it in. I'm also working on a video in general. And of course, uh, the streams I usually turn up on. I shall continue to turn up on. Comic Art is the 21st. Yeah. Oh, that's, uh, yeah. It's about that would give away. us Wednesday, Thursday, Friday Six to play days. the game. So that's probably enough time actually to do. Yeah, that's prob that, that probably. Probably. If yeah. um, yeah, I got. I still got to get my PC issue resolved with games. So hopefully that'll be. I can, uh, get that fixed up. So we shall see. Um, and if not, we'll just watch a playthrough. Who knows? So yeah, that's that. Uh, anything you guys want to mention? 
No, not um, really. No, I don't think so. Uh, thanks for the super chats. We do answer all of them. It was nice to have a live one. Uh, I hope you guys are enjoying our Last of Us coverage. Uh, and we'll go through the rest of the show and see how it is. Yeah. Like I said, you'll the, the more catch ups are releasing over time. Uh, uh, try and do one per week, and uh, they will all eventually be caught up because we're only the only ones we got left is She Hulk. Uh, believe me, it used to be a hell of a lot more than that. Um, but obviously, just keep an eye on the uh, the the selection of uploads. You'll find that they're all labeled as well. Thanks for watching. Thanks for the kind donations. You have yourselves a good. Yeah. Rest of the day, whatever format that comes in. Yeah. And, uh, we'll see you next Have time. Have a good one, everybody. We'll see you later. Bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.